Bear Country 95.3. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to South Deerfield Frontier Regional, week two of the 2018 season, and what a matchup we have for you. It's the Greenfield Green Wave and the defending Intercounty League North champions, the Frontier Red Hawks, along with Sean Hubert, our studio producer tonight, Dave Reno. I'm Jeff Terrell. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. A lot of anticipation for this one, Sean. Frontier, great year last year, made it all the way to the Western Mass title game. However, they fell short there, but they did win the league championship. They graduated a lot of talent from last year's team, but most people would say they're the champions until someone says otherwise. Greenfield is one team that would like to say otherwise. Well, we talked about it a lot last week at Franklin Tech, and you know, really there is no clear-cut champion of this league right now. Normally, you come into the season, you got a team or two you're looking at and going, it's going to be that team or this team. And every once in a while, somebody will come up and surprise you, but this year it really is wide open. And you know, it's week two, but this is such an important week. I mean, this game here will really go a long way to decide who is going to be the champion of the league. And, and then you know, it's week two, but still, this could be the most important game of their season. Right now, Greenfield and Frontier, I, I, I'm dying to see who ends up being the team. You know what I mean? And maybe we won't know by the end of this game, but it's going to be a good game. We talk about the graduation of a lot of stars from the matchup last year, won by Greenfield in overtime at Vets Field. For Greenfield, they lost a lot of the big guys up front. Their skill position players are, for the most part, all back. Frontier, it's the opposite situation. They have some linemen back, but they, a lot of new skill position players, but there's an awful lot of talent out there, starting with number 22 for Greenfield. I was just going to say, R.J. Bird. I mean, this kid's incredible. He's been so fun to watch over the last few years, and uh, I don't know that we've seen a kid run for 1,000 yards in three years. I, I, right? Sophomore, junior, and never senior happened, year. Yeah. Never happened. Yeah, so, uh, again, last week, Bird, 28 carries, 202 yards. So 20% uh, of the way there already in game yeah, week one. Um, again, you know, we, we talked about this earlier a little bit about with Brayden Stack here a few years back where, you know, that kid had all the talent and the ability, but the blocking, they just didn't, you know, they, the kids like Hart and, and Brewington and, and a lot of injuries and uh, he, they just couldn't get him out of the backfield. I mean, that kid, should, his name should be on a banner hanging in the gym and it's not. Um, R.J. Bird's already hanging up there twice, and he should be hanging there a third time. And we'll see tonight how well these kids can block for him. And that really is the story of the game. I mean, Kutch boiled it down to that, right? Blocking up front. It's so generic, but it's so true. It's so interesting. Before the game, we were down talking to uh, some of the coaches, and I was speaking with Glenn Wilson, who's the yeah. line coach for Great. Greenfield. And I said, Glenn, how are your kids looking this year? You have some new guys in there. You know, you guys are really loaded at the skill positions. And he quickly cut me off, and he says, no, no, I'm a line coach. As far as I'm concerned, my guys are the skill guys. And right. really, games are won and lost in the trenches. Yeah, again, it's just it's so basic, but it's so true on both sides of the ball. I mean, if you can't block through your back to get out of the backfield for the quarterback to drop back and pass, then that's not going to work. And obviously, uh, on the other side of the ball, I mean, again, the, the game is won on, in the trenches. It really is. And, uh, again, this, uh, this, this game is uh, very curious. I'm very much looking forward to it. And uh, it's going to, again, it's going to go a long way to tell the story of 2018 for both of these teams. All right, we are just minutes away from the start of tonight's game. 7 o'clock kickoff here in South Deerfield. Perfect night for football here in September. And a great matchup. We'll see how it plays out actually on the field. Kickoff coming up next on Bear Country. Not a country. Just want to take a moment to recognize and thank Bear Country Radio, Jeff Terrell and Sean Hubert for their many years of supporting high school athletics. So thank you, Bear Country. Here come the Red Hawks. in South Deerfield, the sun now just fading along the western horizon. We had a nice warm day today. It's going to be a nice warm weekend, but in terms of a Friday night football atmosphere, Sean doesn't get much better than this. Two good teams. Weather is perfect. Big crowd. This is great. Uh, you know, last week we had a treat we over at Franklin Tech, rise. putting up the lights and a nice the ceremony up front. And, uh, as the front uh, not a great game overall, but great atmosphere as well. Anthem. Big crowd and uh, certainly here tonight as well. 
Time now for the national anthem from the Frontier Regional Marching Band. minutes of football now await to decide the winner here again they had to go to OT this week last year 52 weeks ago they had to play a little extra at that field before Greenfield finally came up with what many people at that point considered to be a stunning upset Greenfield Sean they have not had a lot of success against Frontier since entering the North County League a decade ago we have that 2012 season which was a great year for Greenfield they went to the postseason that was the last time they went to the postseason they won here in a very rough game. Yeah. And then last Number year, 30, and that's it. Campbell to kick off yeah. Not a lot of success against these guys. That was Zach Bartik's senior year. Yeah, Greenfield was 7-0 and coming in. They ended up the winning Hawks. that game, just barely hanging on. But, boy, did Zach get beat up in that game and a couple other guys, too. And effectively, that really was the end of the season for Greenfield. They lost their next couple of games. They lost their playoff game, and, yep. and that was that. that was but, that. Finished 8-3 uh, after a yeah. really no start. Yeah, but that was, that was Frontier, man. They, uh, they, Greenfield came in here and... Uh, they won the game, but they got beat up pretty good. All right, Hunter Campbell has a teed up on the 40. Greenfield kicking off left to right. And kind of a little bit of a pooch kick taken at the 28-yard line. Great downfield coverage by the Wave. Very short return. Down. They just couldn't get him down. Now and again, you know what's coming. Now you just got to stop it. The forest last week ended up with 13 carries for 64 yards in that 30-day loss against Pittsfield. And McMillan both had 13 carries. McMillan had 53 yards. It was Blight with the most yards last week. He had 65 on nine carries. So some good work by the fullback last week for Frontier. First down and 10 for the Red Hawks. Ball spotted right around their own 49 yard line. Hildred will give to McMillan on the right side. Cuts it in. Into the Greenfield second yard wow. and more to the 30, 25 to the 20. Still going right sideline. Inside the 10. Finally knocked out of bounds. Inside the Greenfield 10 yard line, McMillan with a tremendous run. And the Red Hawks are in business deep in Green Wave territory. That was Aaron Landry. That is not, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, second first, same as the first right there. Again, they're running the plays. McMillan so quick through the middle of the line. Great block out front. There's line of scrimmage on that. That's about 44 yards on that rip. And yeah, brings the ball down, trying to see is really just outside the five yard line. I believe, and looking at the side judge here. So yeah, just outside the five yard line. We'll call it the uh, six. First down and goal for the Hawks. McMillan this time comes in motion. Inside give to Blight. And brings it to a, just uh, right, right around the five yard line, maybe a yard. Yeah, they'll give a yard on that one. Again, he had the most yards last week in the front here. Nine carries, 65 yards, didn't find the end zone, but he's the biggest kid in the backfield, six feet, 180 pounds. Second down and goal. Frontier really are just underway opening drive and Greenfield has not had great defensive success on this opening drive so far. Like the fullback, McMillan on the left side. He will come in motion, play action, Hildreth, bootleg, takes it on the left side. Greenfield trying to close the seam. R.J. Bird corrals him down, brings him down 
inside the five yard line and now it is third down. So Greenfield stiffening up a bit. That's what I'm talking about there. You got to keep your eyes open for Matt Hildreth coming out of the backfield. That was a designed run for Hildreth. Again, not a big kid. He's 5'9", about a buck 40, but pretty quick to the outside. Heady player. Yeah, it was Bird that came up and kept him out of the end zone. Yeah, ball spotted, I guess, right about the four yard line. Give him a gain of a yard on that. Freeman is the left end. The line up there, DeForest is on the right side this time. Third down and goal. Pitch on the left side, DeForest, nothing doing. Sack and company, Greenfield really stacking them up. And now it's going to be fourth down. Nick Lyons also in on the stop. 6-1, 330 yeah, pounds. Big kid, yeah, Lyons, good ball player, yeah. Stopped up the middle right there. So yeah, Frontier, the big run there. Get down inside the five yard line, but now it's gonna be fourth and goal. So three straight carries and uh, about a yard once I get inside the five here. Clock in motion, 8.23 to play here in the first quarter. We are scoreless, but Frontier threatening, but trying to avoid turning it over on downs here inside the Greenfield five. I don't see Brandon Bryan out there, so they're not gonna kick the field goal. <laughs> nope. Fourth down from the four. Fourth and goal from the four. McMillan comes in motion. He'll take it on a sweep. Cuts to the outside, back to the inside. Near the goal line, McMillan driven back. He Bird finished him. did Jordan not get in. Did not. Bird came from the other side of RJ the field, and he's very good at closing. His Greenfield closing speed is phenomenal, and, and Greenfield takes over on now. Well, the speed coming out of the backfield is pretty good, too, so that'll be fun to watch once Greenfield takes possession of this ball. But nice job by the wave there. Again, the big play to get down inside the five-yard line, the big run by McMillan, and then Greenfield denied them. So inside the five-yard line, Greenfield will now take over first and 10. 7.56 to play here in the opening quarter. We are still scoreless. Vega, Daniel Vega comes to the near side right. Hunter Campbell up top on the left. Sack, line up on the right side, backs in the I formation. Hazleton and Bird. It's R.J. Bird on first down. Had his Bird legs taken out from under him. Coming through. Corbin Blight on a stop for Frontier. That was Blight, number six, okay, man. No gain on a play. Obviously not where you want to start your opening drive three. inside the five yard line. And try to run Bird out of there. And actually they're gonna get him right back to the line of scrimmage. So no gain on that carry for R.J. Bird. R.J. last week, 202 yards, 28 carries, four touchdowns as well. He had touchdown runs of 245, 42, and 29. So we know the explosiveness that kid has out of the backfield. Yeah, we've seen games where he's been contained for a while, and then right. the next thing you know, he's dancing into the end zone. Yeah, next you know, he's running down the field on you, yeah. <laughs> so very hard to contain for an entire game. No gain there, second down and 10. From the four, and now we have a whistle, no flag. Timeout called by Greenfield. Timeout called by Greenfield. We'll take Again, a, a quick 30 second break. 7 8 to play here in the opening quarter. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Children's Hall scoreboard, we are scoreless. Back after this on Bear Country. Behind the frontier bench. <laughs> All right, play back on now. Second down and 10 for Greenfield from right around their own four yard line, moving left to right here in the shadow of their own end zone. Phelps, back to pass, out of the end zone, throwing over the middle, looking for Vega. Battle for the ball, who got well, it? Man, no one. Double four. coverage, Number Vega three, couldn't Daniel quite come out third down. The ball was well thrown, but you're right, Jeff, right into double coverage. It looked as though it had a better shot of being picked off than caught by Vega. So he did a nice job of actually man, keeping the defender from picking coverage. that off. He had inside position and he was able to knock that ball down, so. Going to be third Learning down and 10. 10 now for Greenfield. And again, not the optimal spot you want to start your first drive from, but they need to chuck the yards here. Third down and 10 from the four. So if Frontier can hold and keep Greenfield to a three and out, uh, it will be a situation where they will have the ball no worse than midfield uh, and probably punt, much uh, better than that. Back of the end zone, stuff to punt out of for sure. All right, Greenfield now will set up. 
Phelps under center. Lone back is R.J. Bird. Two receivers to either side. Coming in motion is Hazelton. And the give is to Bird on the left side. Gets a block, looks to turn the corner. Yeah, and then he gets corralled there. Yeah, short of the 10 yard line, well shy of the first down. It will be fourth down, so Greenfield now to punt. Three yards, and again, and Frontier's going to have a good way. field position. And if they get a really nice return, they could begin this drive in the red zone. Yeah, you can see Hazelton came, came in motion. Drops back to punt. He cut in, tried to block for Needle Bird, but yeah, he only gained about back three, to return three, for three the yards ball. on that carry. So a pair of carries for three yards. Again, tough spot for Greenfield to start inside their own five, but nice job to stop Frontier there. McMillan back at the Greenfield 40-yard line to get the boot. Snap goes back, kick is away. They kind of kick it away from him, and the ball takes a nice Greenfield roll. That's about the Great best. Kick. That's about the best scenario for Greenfield. It's out to the 44-yard line, line so and that's where the Hawks will take over. Yeah, low line drive. It came out a little low, but then it kind of bounced and rolled, and the deep man for Frontier just backed away. There's no point in trying to field that. And, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, Jeff. Best case scenario right there for Greenfield. But Frontier, pretty good uh, starting field position here at the Greenfield 45. Other games tonight, we'll talk about this at halftime. Franklin Tech is at Lee. Lee uh, took care of Turner's in week one with a good second half performance. Mahars at East Hampton. And you've got Turner's Falls at Athol Mohawk. We're going to talk about the Warriors. They're at home tonight against Pathfinder. A game that they should win, but questions about the remainder of the season. We'll talk about that. Boy, in East a bit. Hampton last week, huh? Ouch. Yeah. They give up 70 with 72 Two points. Yeah. McMillan on a carry. And McMillan takes it on the right side on first down. Brings it inside the Greenfield 45 down yeah, to the 40-yard line. The we give up about six there. Second down and four coming up. Yeah, so McMillan already three uh, just two carries, I'm sorry, and 50 yards for yeah. Edo. Well, we would see him play special teams. I mean, he was not going to play except in, in uh, late games of blowouts over Wordley and Landry and those yeah. guys. Dobus, but yep. you know we kind of saw the future the last couple of falls, and now the future's here. He'll take it again. A little spin move. He got caught in the backfield, but makes a Nick nice Miller move. He is very elusive, and he got it right near the first down marker. We will see if they will move the sticks, and yes, they will. That was just fantastic. I mean, he was dead to rights in the backfield. He got the handoff, and all of a sudden, trying to catch the defender. There was somebody all over him. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. It's a little spin move, and then. Back across the line of scrimmage and enough for the first down. That play looked doomed from the start. Nice job by him. 5'8", 152. So, yeah, that's kind of the way those guys were the last couple of years. Not the biggest guys, but very elusive, very effective. From the Greenfield 40, they go to the center of the line. We'll see who comes up out of the bottom of the pile. That was Blake. Blake. And Corbin, Corbin gains two weeks. yards. Yeah, about two yards there to the Greenfield 33. Uh, Second down coming up. Again, Blake had the fewest carries last week on the team. He had nine carries, but he had the most yards, 65. So a good job by him. A couple carries tonight, just three yards so far. Well, that was a tough situation for Frontier. They had the lead, looked like they were going to go up by a couple of stores uh, near the end of the first half, and then it was all Pittsfield in the uh, second half. Yeah, led at halftime for sure, yeah. Hodreth rolling out to the left, out of the backfield. Pass is caught yeah, by McMillan. McMillan. Little spin move, Vega lets him go. A little bit shy of the first down but he's close, it'll be third down coming up. Well, the throw wasn't bad, but the catch was even better. McMillan third went up three. to get that, and about as high as he could go. Picked that thing out of the air, had uh, two catches last week, just seven yards. He had uh, actually only a four reception, uh, four uh, completions by Hildreth. Two of them went to McMillan, one to Freeman, one to DeForest. Here's the uniform number two, which uh, in high school football, you don't see that too often. It's been cropping up more in sports lately, and I'll talk about that in a second. There is a specific reason for that. Slot left. DeForest now will take it left side. First down and more. Cuts to the outside. Dragged Run down from line, behind by the Greenfield defender Carlos. inside the Greenfield 25. First and 10. Just quick out of the backfield right there. Yep. Carlos Cardinales, the defensive back. Sophomore for Greenfield on the tackle. From the green wave. But another Red Hawk first down. 3.38 to play here in the opening quarter, and we are scoreless, but now right at the 20 yard line. So tell me the number two story, I want to know. Um, well, I did not know. We here in New England don't like talking about uh, Mr. Jeter and his Hall of Fame career with the <laughs> New York Yankees, but you all of a sudden, the last decade, you saw a whole bunch of number twos pop up. 
It's the fourth and down. Left side has the corner. Does he have the pylon for the touchdown? Oh, oh right there. Just outside. I thought he had the pylon, Sean. Mm -hmm. It looked as though he got there, but go to the pylon. He even knocked it over. Yeah, look at this. He was laying down. I mean, he had to, he had to hit it right. I mean, it, it wasn't laying like that a minute ago, but. They're not going to say he got it. They're going yeah, to mark, him, mark him back actually at the three. Not, uh, only, not only the one, but back yeah, at the three-yard line. Yeah, he stepped out there. So he All stepped right. out. Because right. he did have the pylon, but he had stepped out yep. first. Good run. Good run by DeForest. If you're the Greenfield D, who do you key on? You got uh, Blight. You got McMillan. You got DeForest running well. Uh, again, the blocking up front. That's the key. And right now, Frontier is getting it done. No points on the board yet, but... Yep. They're starting to pile up the yards already. They were stopped on first and goal on their last series, the first series. Right about where they are now, inside the five, about the four. Yep, first down and goal from the four. Handoff up the middle of White, and he is into the end zone touchdown. for the touchdown. A little bit of a delayed call by the officials, but a four-yard touchdown run by Corbin Blight. 6-0 Red Hawks. Uh, again, Blake had the most yards on the backfield last week for Frontier in that loss to Pittsfield. Nine carries, 65 yards. He did not find the end zone, just found it there from four yards out. Frontier, I dare say, is dominating this game right now. They've possessed the ball. They drove it down inside the five, unable to score. Greenfield unable to do much on their possession, and now Frontier's going to go for two to try to extend this lead to eight. Hilliger, Thunder Center. Takes the snap, and this play is going to get whistled dead. It was a pitch to the left false to the forest, but a full start on the Hawks. That'll mark them back five the yards, and they'll try again from there. We'll see if it changes the play call. Maybe it will, maybe not. We've seen that before, right? You're only going to try to run that thing in, but it's going to cost you a few yards, and now maybe we'll see uh, Hildreth roll out and try to run it in or throw it. And we might have a timeout on the field. We do, taken by Frontier. They're going to kick. I think they might be kicking now. Did I see them uh, bring a kicking tee out? I thought I just saw somebody throw a tee out there. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Well, again, they've had a kicking game through the years. Remember Brandon Bryant? I mean, that kid just, uh, he was a game changer with his foot. Yep. Hildreth is going to try to attack on the conversion kick now. Matt Hildreth will the point after. All right. We're set to go. The snap back. Perfect. Placement down. Kick on the way. Good. Looks good, and it is. We'll take a timeout, 3.05 to play here in the opening quarter. And on the conquest of Greenfield, South Airfield and Shelburne Falls scoreboard, it is Frontier 7, Greenfield nothing. The way to the Green Wave. Again, they had the ball on their first drive, very deep in their own territory. Dylan Epno set to boot it for the Hawks from their own 40-yard line, R.J. Bird back at the 10, but I'm thinking we're probably not going to see him touch the ball here, but you never know. They're not going to want to kick it to him, but he might end up with it anyway. Little yeah. pooch kick. This is basically an onside yeah, kick. Nice job there. Three. Fair catch by Hunter Number Campbell. Campbell. And green good wave. field position for the Green Wave. The ball right around their own 38-yard line. So they began their opening drive really in the shadow of their own end zone. We'll see if they fare any better here. Yeah, I'm not going to fault them for that first drive. Again, that's tough. You make that uh, the four-down stop, and you keep Frontier out of the end zone, and next thing you know, you're coming on, your offense comes on the field, and you're at your own four. So, yeah, that's tough. Let's see what this does for them here, being out at their own 34-yard line. A little bit different there. First down and 10 from the 38 yard line. I formation, double wide outs to the near side right. Tight end sack on the left side. RJ Bird on the left side. Big gainer into frontier territory. Left sideline inside the 40, down to the Red Hawk 34 yard line. So he takes it from his own 38 to the Frontier 34, first and 10. 12 and 16, right? 28 yard run. 28. And uh, again, we kind of knew Bird's going to get this done. That first drive, when you start inside your own goal, uh, that, that's tough. So here, first carry Bird now, three carries, 31 yards, and Greenfield's in business at the Frontier 35. Well, going up against R.J. Bird, if you hold him under the century mark, that's oh, a success. Frontier did well. actually did last year. Yeah. They held him to 95. They but might have been the only team that did. But Greenfield did get the W. Yep. I formation behind Bird. R.J. did miss one game last year due to injury. Long snap count. Finally, the give inside. Hazleton, he got pounded. Nice play there by Blake. So just a short gain of about one. Had he not made that tackle, there was some room there. Yeah, and Hazleton, 
I mean, so the, the roster today, and some names just pop up, and you go, God, how long is that kid going to play? It seems like <laughs> Nate Hazleton has played football here for nine Long years. Time, you know, uh, yeah. he's done a lot of good work and uh, carry for him, and they give him a yard right there. Well, it's funny you say that because his little sister, Katie, the basketball player, uh, she played as an eighth grader. You talk about somebody who, right. by the time she's a senior, right. we're going to be saying the same thing. She's been playing here oh, forever. She's 28? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Second down and eight. Ball just inside the 35 of Frontier. Greenfield moving left to right, trailing seven to nothing. They get a long snap count. Play action pass out of the backfield. Nice catch yeah, by Campbell out of the backfield. That'll go for a first and 10. Check that, that's Hazleton, not Campbell. That's 38, not 30. Hazleton and it's a good for a Greenfield first down just outside the 20 yard line. Well, Matt Hildreth completed a pass that was really a great catch. And right there, Owen Phelps had one in completion, but that one right there, again, a well thrown ball, but even better catch. Out of the backfield, Hazleton, about 10 yards on that one. First down for the wave. And the ball just outside the 20 yard line. Lone back is RJ Bird. They're stacked up to the left and there's the pitch to RJ on the left side with some blockers. Frontier though closing late. RJ was able to gain though some good yardage down right near the 20 yard line, maybe just inside the 20. It'll be second down and about six coming up. Uh, again, yeah, good coverage right there and uh, Bird just so quick to the outside. They're giving five on that. So we'll call it 36 yards now on four carries for RJ. And had a couple hundred yards last week rushing. 28 carries, 202 yards. Four touchdowns with that, by the way. 17 yard line of Frontier. They need to get it to around the 12 or better to get the first down. Double wide outs to either side. The lone back is RJ Bird. Phelps squats in under center, calling the signals. Drops back to pass with time. Throws it left side. Got a man down there. It was Vega. Overthrew him, though. Down at the goal line. It'll now be third down for the way. Just slightly overthrown. Vega had made a little space between him and the, he and the defender. And you see he raised his arm to try to kind of reach up, see if he could tap that thing to himself. And it was yeah, about a foot over the furthest he could reach over his head. So not a badly thrown ball, just slightly over his head. Vega, they call him Nooney, and... My last memory of him was huh. Turkey Day at Turner's last year. He had a huge fourth quarter. He threw a ball, didn't he? He threw a ball, <laughs> yeah. The, he sure did. The famous fourth and 23, yeah. which will be forever a part of the uh, history throw. of the rivalry. Great throw, great catch, and uh, absolutely great game overall. That got Greenfield close, and then R.J. Bird with the game-winning touchdown with seconds left. All right, third down and five from the 17. I formation, back to passes Phelps, throws on the right side, under throw, and really, was well, really closer to the frontier four. defense right there, looking to try to get it to Hunter Campbell. Hunter yeah, Campbell. I mean, there was a little bit of pressure coming in on Owen, but yeah, that ball was just badly under thrown, and the receiver had absolutely no opportunity to catch that, so now it's gonna be Greenfield with a fourth and long here. Yep, obviously, four down territory from the 17 yard line, moving right uh, left to right, they trail seven to nothing. Late stages here of the first quarter. Frontier scored with 3.05 left in the quarter on a Corbin Blight four yard run. Matt Heldreth with the conversion kick. All right, fourth and five for the wave. This could be the last play of the quarter. Double wide outs to either side. The lone back is Bird. Phelps calling the signals. Drops back to pass, short drop, throws on the right side, wide open, it's Vega! And he's into the end zone, touchdown! Vega was all by himself. He must, I was watching the ball, he must have put one heck of a move on the DB. Yeah, you know what, the DB was at least five feet behind him. I saw that he came back and spun towards the ball, and you're right, he left him in the dust, and then once he caught the ball, he was able to spin quickly and just run straight down the middle of the field for the touchdown. So fourth and five, Greenfield, nice play there by Phelps, good throw, good catch, and Greenfield's on the board at 7-6 right now with the extra points pending. Greenfield will go for two. As they Greenfield always do. Trying to take the lead here now. High formations, two receivers, Vega and Campbell to the near side right. Sack, the tight end on the left side. 
And the give is to R.J. Bird, nothing doing. Great surge by the Frontier D. They tried a little misdirection kind of cut back, did not work. And that is the end of the quarter here. Our score on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne Falls scoreboard. Frontier seven, Greenfield sick. Second quarter action next on Bear Country 95.3. All right, back in South Deerfield. Just a little of an orange glow now on the western horizon, but it's getting dark. The first little hint of cool entering the booth here, but perfect night for football and a good game at the end of one. 7-6 Frontier. Hunter Campbell set to boot it away. And Mellon's back at his five, but again, he's not gonna touch it. Little squid kick. That might go out of bounds, let it go. Yep, they do let it go. One of the Frontier guys came up to just about touch it. And it did roll out of bounds, so the flag against the wave. We'll see how Frontier deals with this one. Yeah, that's the problem when you try to do that little squip kick to the side. And if nobody ends up touching it and it rolls out of bounds, so they'll have the option to make them re-kick that or they can take it there with the penalty. We'll see what they choose. Well, our opening night Frontier last year, ball. Sean. Frontier, by the way, is going to take the ball in their own 32. Frontier, 37, uh, 37, rather. Our opening night last night, uh, last year, was Greenfield at Mahar. And you remember every single onside kick Greenfield attempted, except for their last one, was Four, successful. Five of them, yeah. That's in a row. Really one of the game, for sure. McMillan on first yeah, down. Moved just forward. Again, Greenfield's D was there, yeah, but he's just so kick. darn slippery. <laughs> Brings the ball to the 40-yard line, maybe up to the, yeah, right on the, four, just past the 40-yard line, second down and seven. As you mentioned, not a big kid. He's 5'8", about 150 pounds, and had a pretty good week last week in week one for Greenfield. This week he's off to a good start, four carries and 58 yards. Corbin Blight from four yards for Frontier. Phelps to Vega for 17 yards for Greenfield. The difference, Matt Hildreth's conversion kick, 7-6 Frontier. 10-22 to play here in the first half. Second down and seven, Hildreth will give to McMillan on the right side. He's small, but breaking tackles brings it out across the 45 to the 46. He's about two yards shy of the first down, third down coming up. Yeah, interesting because Frontier was lined up to go for the two point conversion and then the five yard penalty. They opted to kick the extra point instead. So maybe that penalty helped them if they were uh, not successful in that two point conversion, we'd be tied. Instead, they get the extra point. They're up 7-6. We will try, uh, we'll do our best to keep you updated on some of the other games happening with our local teams. A lot of interest in that Tech League game. It's not a league game. Intercounty League North game, though, in Athol. Athol Turners, a lot of interest in that one. Garrett DeForest on the left side did not get the first down. In fact, he struggled to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe marked back a half yard. And that'll present fourth down and about two. Yeah, six carry for no gain on a play. Yeah, they're gonna say oh, no, no gain. gain. Yeah, yeah, so 30 yards for him. And yeah, you know, again, here tonight we're looking at Greenfield and Frontier and talking about what a short season this is, how important this game is. Turner Falls Athol, same situation. That's a big game for both of those teams. Both coming off uh, non-league losses in their first week of action. We'll see if Frontier actually kicks here. They're lined up in punt formation and they will in fact boot it away. Whoa. High kick, nice kick Whoa. over Hunter Campbell's head. He's going to have to field though. They're going to stop it right there. What He's going to let it roll to the five yard line. What a kick. That is, let's see, from the 45 to 50 yard punt. Not too bad. And we already dropped the Brandon Bryant uh, name tonight but that yep. right there was very similar to what he used to do and that really is a game changer when you have a punter that can do that flip that field oh absolutely yeah. so now Greenfield again their first drive was from inside their own five yard line and they had no success at all yep three and out so we'll see if they can do that here they're going to start at their own five again out of the shadow of their own end zone just the opposite side of the field 8 45 to play here on the first half Greenfield Savings Bank halftime report coming up Frontier seven, Greenfield six. Two receivers to the far side right. Backs are in the I formation. Long snap count. RJ Bird up the gut to the left side. Looks to cut RJ back, Bird cutting 
Nice gain, he brings it out across the 15 yard line. And see how close he got to that first down marker. He did get the first down. First down 10, so 46 yards for Bird, five carries. And haven't seen a spin move out of RJ yet. Yeah, he definitely likes to do that. Maybe he's reining that in. There were times I thought he spun a little spinny. unnecessarily a little, at times. A little over spinning, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but, um, maybe, maybe he's being a little bit more selective and more effective. More aggressive right now, running straight forward. And again, uh, five carries, 46 yards here in the early going for RJ. And on the ball now, and around the 19 yard line, first down and 10, right back to Bird up the gut. Frontier stacking it up. Short game, got it to around the 20. We'll give him about two there, second down and eight. Well, it was two years ago this game where Frontier had their way with the Green Wave. They were, Frontier was loaded that year as they have been in recent memory. RJ scored late, but I'm remembering now they played that game on, it was a day game. It was a Saturday afternoon for some reason. I'm wondering if we had a weather situation the Friday night or something. Boy, I do remember that. It was a day game here, right? Yep. Yeah, that was RJ's uh, sophomore year. They contained him for most of the game and then he broke one late. Yeah, the Frontier right. won decisively. And then, of course, Greenfield got them back last year in OT up at Betts Field. I formation, wide outs to either side. Second down and eight. Play action. Phelps throwing right. Caught but hit oh, immediately. Yeah. Pass was complete to Hazleton, but he got Your decked immediately. Matt Hildreth. Hildreth on the stop. It'll be third down and long. That'll be the second catch for he's to make just four yards. Well, actually, I'm going to mark him up a little bit. Give him again about five on that yeah, catch. I think the, yeah, the four momentum. Where he actually landed was several yards back. Yeah. They did give him four momentum, but you know, a makeable third down and four or five for the wave here. They trail by one here in South Deerfield. Crowd with the defense jam. See if they can get it done here. On third down and four. 24 yard line. I formation. Play action. Heavy rush. Sack. All the way back. Just That's outside the 10 yard line. They came blasting through. And Greenfield will have to punt. Boy, and they lost about 15 yards on that sack, too. So. Not only the loss of down, but the huge loss all the way back, as you said, Jeff. Looks like, well, inside there's about 10 yards. Fourth and 16. Fourth and 16, yeah. yeah. Well, if, if, it's, if it's fourth and 23, I say Greenfield should go like they did on Turkey Day. <laughs> yeah, well, anything less than that. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to work. Not going to work. Yeah, I know that fourth and 23 was that, that was a one in a million shot. Yeah, that was amazing. From the goal line is where Hunter Campbell is going to punt. McMillan at midfield. Snap goes back, here comes Frontier. Campbell did get it away, floats it. McMillan from the 43. On the right side, great downfield McMillan coverage by Greenfield. That might draw a flag. And we got some jawing yeah. by the Greenfield man who oh. ran down there, Cardinalis. No flag. Or did we have a flag on the, the there was a flag not on the end of the play. Did one of the Frontier guys come across a little bit sooner? And if you're Greenfield, do you just say, you know what? Yeah, you might we, want to re-kick that. Well, might. or they could say, we got good downfield coverage. We're starting them at midfield. Yep. Yeah, that is going to go Frontier. against Frontier. And they're going to, and Greenfield's going to say, you know what? We're not going to risk a big return. We'll just we'll set up Frontier right at the, the Greenfield yard 43 yard line. No, you're right. I mean, the defender got there just as the ball and the receiver, uh, the back got there at the same time. So Half not time much of a return there, but still Mark starting Jan. inside Greenfield territory. Maybe about the uh, 40, uh, 40, uh, 43 yard line, I guess it is. Yep. 5.24 to play here in the first half. Frontier seven, Greenfield six. Well, it's a game we thought it might be. Oh yeah. At least right now, who knows what happens in the second half, but n yeah, not a lot of separation talent-wise between these teams. Nope, you're equal. First down and 10 for the Hawks, moving left to right, leading by one. Pitch is gonna go to McMillan around the right side on a sweep, has the first yeah, down, McMillan tackled from behind, behind, right around the Greenfield 29-yard line. Oh. It's a nice gain of about uh, 
12 yard lines or more, uh, 12 yards or more there. Very good for a Red Hawk first down, first and 10 frontier. 75 yards already for Ito. Nice run there, good blocks out in front. Even the quarterback was out front blocking for him. 28 yard line, takes it from the 43 to the 28. So a nice gain there. First down and 10, clock in motion, 4.55 to play here in the half. Frontier leading by one. We're also on FCAT, Frontier Community Access Television. Kevin and his crew here tonight. On first down, inside give to Blake. Got hit Four immediately, but then popped it forward over right guard, Brody brings Harris it to the Greenfield 25. Four, Give a gate of six. about uh, four there, second down and six. 117 yards on the ground already for Frontier in this one. McMillan leading the way with 75 yards, followed by DeForest with 30. Corbin Blight, that was his fourth carry right there, 11 yards for him. He had the touchdown earlier in that first quarter. And Hilders, Matt Hilder at the quarterback, just one carry, just one yard for him out of the backfield. Completed his only pass attempt, one of one for five yards as well. Second and six. Greenfield, 26 yard line. Pitch left side to DeForest, gets around the containment, has the first down and more, still going left side. And he is gone into the end zone, touchdown. 26 yard touchdown run. And Frontier now leads it 13 to six. Uh, again, great blocks, great run. DeForest gets to the outside, walks the tightrope right around the 10 yard line and was able to turn it back in and untouched into the end zone from there. The four is seven, carries 56 yards, and he's in the end zone now. Frontier extends their lead to 13-6. And we are assuming they'll line up to go for two here. Although they did end up kicking the extra point last time after the penalty set them back. Well, we'll see what they do. Looks like they're gonna set up to go for the two. Yep, well, if they are successful, makes it a nine point game. Two I think so that's here. two possessions. Book would say do it, yep. Hildreth, no, trying to bootleg and Sack was right there to rip him down before they could develop that play. So the two point conversion is no good. 3.52 to play here in the first half and on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard, it's now Frontier 13, Greenfield six. Well, one of our sponsors, our newest sponsor of high school football here on Bear Country, they're gonna be on for the season with us, Cheslick's Market right in the center of South Deerfield. I wanna say hi to Nicole. And I want to say hi to Dave and to Maddie, who uh, was working the register on my order on my way over here to the uh, to the field. Welcome aboard, everybody at Cheslick's Market. That's the market right in the center of South Carolina. Thank you very much. We certainly appreciate it. All right, Frontier now set to boot it away. Leading by seven, 13-6. Squib kick. Taken in the center of the field, and a nice return by Nate Hazelton. Yeah, Brings it out across return. the 45 yard line. 47 yard line, so first, first, and, first and 10 for the way from there. Field, 46 yard line. A good kick, it was a line drive right up the middle, but Hazelton fielded it perfectly and then just was able to run straight right up the middle of the field. He wasn't messing around with that, just. Straight forward past the 40, past the 45, all the way out to the 46 yard line. So that's where Greenfield will start this drive. Down 13-6 at about 3.47 to go here in the first half. Well played first half here. Phelps, the son of former Greenfield star football player, Kyle Phelps. And he also has cousins. Phelps was, Phelps is a huge name in the history of Greenfield Grandpa football Billy. for sure. Grandpa Billy. Absolutely. First down and 10. R.J. Burr tries the left side front. You're waiting for him, but a nice move by R.J. But Frontier stays home. Brings him down for no gain. A lot of dancing and running for nothing. He looked like he wanted to spin there at the end. He didn't. He started to kind of cut back, but by then it was too late. So, yeah, actually going to mark him back. Yeah, we'll call it no gain, but they're going to mark it about an inch behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's going to be strange. I mean, we, I, I hesitate to say this because we have, I mean, we're only week two of his senior year, but it's going to be strange to not see that... Uh, that number 22 out there for Greenfield. Right. What a what a threat, what a productive player he's been all these years. Been fun to watch, no doubt. Second down and 10, Could 46. First player to brush for 1,000 yards, three straight seasons. Back to pass, Phelps. Airs it out on the right side, turned Vega around. The ball ended up being thrown out of bounds as the pocket was collapsing. He had to get rid of it. It'll be third down and 10. Yeah, three of seven passing right now is Owen Phelps. 
36 yards through the air. A couple of those caught by Hazleton and one by Vega. And the, cop by, uh, the catch by Vega went for the touchdown. The lone Greenfield score tonight. Boy, Vega was wide open too. Well, again, this game's on FCAT, and it's going to be aired over the weekend. So I'm going to check the yeah. film because, again, I'm the play-by-play -play guy, and I had to watch the ball, yeah. and I want to see how he got open. I was holding on the quarterback <laughs> on that one myself. By yeah. the time I looked, Vega was already standing there by himself. So, yeah. He must have put one heck of a move on to get that open. High formation, double receivers to the far side right. On third down and 10 from the Greenfield 46. They go back to Bird up the middle. Cuts to the outside. Still accelerating. And he's right near the first down marker. Depends on the spot. Looks like he got it. Yeah, I think he did. So his eighth carry gets him 10 yards. 61 yards now for R.J. Bird. They loaded up on the right side. And then R.J. took it left. And let's see. Well, what do we got? We're going back towards the Greenfield huddle. I didn't see a flag. But they are talking about something down there. Pointing at things and... Yeah, I did not see a flag come in. You know, all kinds of people pointing different directions. I have no idea, really. But they're pointing at Greenfield yeah. now, so. It looks like that is going to get stepped off against the wave, so that will eliminate the first down carry. And that's a 10-yard penalty. Brings the ball all the way back to the 38-yard line. Third down and, let's see here. Third and about 16, 17 yards for the Wave now. First penalty against Greenfield. Just one penalty against Frontier earlier in that first quarter. Five yards against them. This is a 10-yarder. Big one there against Greenfield, though. Long third down. Lone back is Bird. Double wide out to either side. Phelps calling the signals. Frontier jumped. They got back. And oh. a big sack again on third down and long. Phelps had no chance to get rid of that football. Derek and now it's fourth down. That's the second time that they came with the blitz on third and long, and it won both times. The forest just blasted through. Phelps had absolutely nowhere to go, and he got buried. They didn't lose quite as many yards as they did on that first sack, but second sack of the game for the Red Hawks. Going to be a long fourth down now for Greenfield. They're going to have to punt this ball away. Yep. Wade will have to boot it away. And Frontier has called a timeout. We'll take the break as well. 2.07 to play here in the first half. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, it's Frontier 13, Greenfield 6 on Bear Country 95.3. Well, Greenfield, for the first time in, I want to say, over 40 years now, has the new G logo on the side of their helmet the exact same thing you see on the side of the helmet for the green bay packers they brought the g back that's what greenfield wore i think early 70s through the mid to late 70s and then they had the the circular green wave logo then they went to that stylized wave logo just said the letters wave in kind of a cool font and then eventually they unveiled a new logo for the Green Wave, which remains on their, their jerseys and their pants. But they have the G on their helmet. They print those on uh, leather helmets back then, did they? <laughs> they may have. Looks pretty sharp. Fourth and, uh, well, I hate to say it, it's, it's actually fourth and 23 <laughs> right now. Not this time, though. But not this time. They will boot it. That was desperation time on Turkey Day. And the ball will come down to the 35-yard line of Frontier. So a nice boot there by Hunter Campbell. And first and 10 now for the Red Hawks. 157 to play. They would love to make it a two-score advantage before intermission. I was just thinking that. Yeah, this is kind of a big, uh, a big drive right here. Big possession for Frontier. More particularly for Greenfield, though. Again, they're down 13-6. And even a locker room down by seven. That's a little more palatable than... Uh, 14 or 15. So, yeah, you get a minute, you get two minutes here, a minute, 57 seconds for Frontier. Ball on their own 35, certainly enough time. But, yeah, Greenfield could use a stop here, and they'd rather go in down one score than two. That is a big difference. Yeah, it's going to be up to uh, Nick Lyons, Cameron Lackey, Colby Avery, the, the big man up front to get it done for Greenfield on this possession. Good start for them there as Garrett DeForest. He actually got Hit by Avery, but was able to slip away from him a little bit. Made a nice gain of about four. Second down and six. Yeah, 140 to play here in the half. Another one of those runs where it looks like he's just not going to get anything. And all of a sudden you look up and he's four or five yards down the field. Eight carries now. 60 yards for Garrett. And a touchdown as well. 
Second down and six. Back to pass is Hildreth. Here comes the rush, lets it fly. That is caught on the left flat for a short gain. A makeable third down coming up for the Hawks will be, and they quickly call a timeout here with 116 to play. In the half. Their third timeout, they have two more. Yeah, we're going to keep it here. Looks like it's gonna be just a very brief timeout, so. Well, they are sending the guys to the bench, so we'll be back after this 30 second timeout here on Bear Country. 95.3. Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report is coming up. We'll recap the first half here with Frontier leading by a score and we'll also talk about the other teams in action. You got Franklin Tech in action on the road against Lee. You got Mohawk at home as they try to keep that football program going against all odds. I mean they are hanging on by a thread right now up there in Buckland, but we'll talk about that. They're playing Pathfinder tonight. And other teams in action as well. Turner's Falls on the road against Athol. Big early season game in the Intercounty League North there as well. Yeah, I'm interested to see how that one turns out. Third and two for Frontier. Ball spot on their own 43 yard line. Here it comes to McMillan. Cuts to the outside. First down and more. And runs out of bounds. Oh, oh, and ends up hitting oh, the speaker. Boy, I'll tell you. And he's okay. Wow. He's, he's going to help pick up the speaker. <laughs> he'll make some popcorn. And he's going to go make sure everybody's got a drink. And he'll fix the band guy's uh, speaker thing that he just got yeah. ran into. How many yards was that? I was too busy watching him slide into the... Well, from his own 43. So that's seven yards. And then... Another six, so 13, 13. yards. Good carry. Here comes Garrett DeForest, bounces to the outside. Greenfield, Garrett though, DeForest. stands him up. Garrett was able to no lean line. forward, though, so get it back four. to the line scrimmage. Quick timeout yeah, called by team. Frontier because they're working on a drive here. Exactly one minute to play here on the half. They lead by seven. Yeah, good drive right now for Frontier, so yeah, a good timeout. They do have one more timeout one remaining, more. so one exactly more, yeah. one minute to go here in the half. 13-6 lead and a little bit of momentum. and. But boy, yeah, you saw McMillan get shoved out of bounds at the end of that run, and he just went head first into that amplifier there. To, the base player's going to be playing at halftime. Yep. He stopped, came back, and helped him pick it back up. That was nice. Second down and 10. Ball is on the Greenfield 44 yard line. Frontier 13. Greenfield six. We'll recap the scoring once we get to halftime here. All right, Frontier breaks the huddle. Freeman, the wide out to the near side right. And the usual backfield lineup for the Hawks. Coming emotions, McMillan. Back to pass is Hildreth. Little jump pass, throw, barely intercepted. Wait, did he get it? No, he did not. He yep. made it look like he did. Yep. Vega, <laughs> Vega made it. He was selling that he caught it in the air for the pick, did not get it. And now it is third down in 10. He caught the short hop. I mean, he did a nice job coming up with the ball. He cut in front of the receiver. The ball was thrown low. Did almost come up with the pick. That is Hildreth's first incomplete pass. He'd only uh, attempted two passes previously, two for two, and that's his first incompletion. So as you said, third and 10 now for Frontier. 54 seconds left, and still with the one timeout remaining here in the half. Frontier doesn't have to use it if they make the first down here because the clock stops in high school and college football on a first down. Pitch goes to McMillan on the right side. Cuts it back in. Short of the first down to the 41-yard line. And clock still in motion with 45 seconds left. Yeah. And, yeah, so now they don't want Greenfield out the ball with too much time here. If they're going to run a play, they're going to let so this thing run, run down. So they'll run a play and let the, let the clock run down. If yep. it is unsuccessful, Greenfield will have almost no time to do anything here. If there's a little more time, Greenfield might have wanted to consider taking a timeout there. But 27 seconds, clock still rolling, 24 now. Frontier's going to take their time, and as you said, run this play and try to leave Greenfield with no time left on the clock. In fact, they're uh, like, likely going to take the uh, yep. 
the five yard penalty oh, here oh, third down. Ah, so looks like they usually last time out. Now, so that's our last time out, 10 seconds left. So yeah, the last play of the game, uh, last play of the half rather, will belong to the Red Hawks. That's, that's good clock management right there. That is fantastic. Well, again, there could be a, the opportunity Greenfield would get the ball for one play, but it depends how long this play takes. Again, 10 seconds. Yeah, well, they have to feel like they have a legitimate shot at the end zone. You do have to be careful with, like, a cross-the-field pass for a pick six, Absolutely. kind of like what Jets rookie quarterback Sam Darnold threw. His first pass was across the field, and it went pick six the other way. He ended up redeeming himself say, after that, in, in, in a big though. way. Yeah. So, yeah, it depends on what kind of play call they go here. You don't want to get too risky. Um, you know, if you're down inside the 20-yard line, you can definitely uh, open things up a little more here. It's got to look like a, a pass a quarterback thinks he can make, and then it just never works when you're throwing it back across the field like that. The defense very, is just very too quick. Rarely. Yeah, I mean, it looks open, but doesn't usually end up being that uh, way. There was one guy, and I'll talk about it in a minute here. There's one guy, famous college quarterback, who, who used to always make those kind of plays all oh, the time. Oh, they're going to punt. They're going to quick kick this now. He'll just drop him back. He'll go back on third down, quick kick, and it's going to go out of bounds at around the 15 of Greenfield with two seconds left. Greenfield will likely just take a knee and we'll get to halftime. Now, the guy who used to make so many unorthodox throws, he, he used to drive his coaches crazy, but for some reason he just, he was ma he was sprinkled with magic pixie dust or something. I'm talking about Doug Flutie. He used to do like jump passes, throwing back against the grain, just crazy. He would throw it left-handed if he had to drop, make the completion. Drop kicked an extra point there, didn't he? Was he did. That, yeah. was, that was his last yeah. play as a quarterback. He uh, drop kicked. 15 yard line at Gillette. He was talented. For Belichick. Right? No yeah, doubt. he just made things happen. Yeah. But but yeah, ordinarily, like I said, sometimes his coaches are like, Doug, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, first down. Okay, never mind. Phelan <laughs> will catch you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, Greenfield has spread. The field here looks like they're not going to take a knee. Maybe try to just break one. Ooh. Flag down, probably against the wave. Bird and, and Bird is going to get wrapped up for no gain. And I believe the penalty is on the wave, yeah, which means they, end of the half here. Yeah, I think that is going to go against Greenfield. And obviously uh, the Red Hawks decline it, and that will be halftime. Let's see. The end of the first half yep. here. All right, end of the first half here at Frontier Regional in South Deerfield. And our score on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Children's Falls scoreboard, it's the Frontier Red Hawks 13, the Greenfield Green Wave 6, the Greenfield Savings Bank. Halftime report coming up next on Bear Country 95.3. Good evening, Red Hawk fans. It's now time for the first halftime show for the Red Hawk Marching Band. The band is under the direction of Mr. Max Sherrill. will feature a combination of their favorite halftime tunes from throughout the football season. Tonight's show consists of some of the greatest hard rock songs of all time. They're going to open a show with Led Zeppelin classic rock and roll. Second tune in the show will be Ozzy Osbourne's most memorable hit, Crazy Train. And they're going to close the performance tonight with well-known rock riffs of all time, Deep Purple, Smoke on the Water. Thank you and let's go Hawks. Report. Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert here in South Deerfield. Dave Reno, our studio producer in Greenfield. Frontier over Greenfield here at halftime. 13 to 6. 
They scored in the first quarter on a Corbin White four-yard run. Matt Hildreth's conversion kick made it seven to nothing. That was with three minutes left in the first. Last play of the first quarter, Owen Phelps hooked up with Daniel Vega on a 17-yard pass for Greenfield. The conversion run failed. Frontier 7-6 at that point. And then DeForest, Garrett DeForest with a 24-yard TD run. The conversion run failed. And Frontier with a 13-6 lead here at halftime. We thought we'd have a good game. We do have a good game. Frontier, though, uh, appears to have a little bit of the better of it right now. Yeah, I would agree. And absolutely. I mean, like in Greenfield, their first drive, they started from inside their own five-yard line. That was just a byproduct of making four straight stops on first and goal. So, again, the defense stepped up right away for Greenfield. Uh, but they had a hard time getting out of that, getting out of the air and own end zone there. So, um, not a good drive for them there. The next one was a better drive. They got their touchdown. Again, they started their next drive inside their own five-yard line. Again, kind of tough to be backed up like that, run the offense the way you want to run it. When we see them out in the middle of the field, they were running it pretty good. But, yeah, Frontier uh, just dominating really on the ground right now. Look at the numbers they're putting up already. 93 yards for McMillan here in the first half. The four is 60. Uh, Blight's only 11 yards, but he's got a touchdown on the ground as well. Hildreth not throwing the ball much. Three, uh, three attempts. He's completed two of them. And he's not running the ball an awful lot, but they're just running their offense and they're putting up points and they're doing what they do year in and year out. Speaking of that Frontier offense, it's the exact same offense that they've run every year right. for a very long time. They just have some new kids in there. And maybe they don't have, you know, a Stephen Worthley or, a, or an Aaron Landry. They, they don't need the guys that they have. They don't need to be them. They right. just need to be themselves. They're doing just fine. Yeah, no more Skrabiskis. There's none of those guys around anymore. But there's always been somebody in that backfield that can get out of that backfield with good blocking. And that's what they teach. You know, they preach hard-nosed football and, and in the trenches, and that's where you're going to win your games, and that's what they do. Uh, they run the ball well, and uh, we're seeing again tonight, like you said, a new cast of characters, but uh, second verse, same as the first. Full night of action with our locals. We'll talk about some of the other games, the other teams that are in action here tonight. Again, here in South Deerfield, Frontier 13, Greenfield 6 at halftime. As the Greenfield Savings Bank halftime report rolls on from South Deerfield, this is Bear Country 95.3.
taking on uh, the Red Raiders. Sean, they lead at halftime. Yep, scoreboard update, 14-6. Turner's Falls is leading at Athol. Again, another one of those very important early season matchups that we're not sure who the clear-cut defined team is in this league that should be the leader. And uh, these weeks are going to tell us a lot. Right now, this is a Frontiers game to win, and sounds like Turner's Falls is a, a halftime lead down in Athol. So, again, another big game for them down there. East Hampton's playing Mahar. East Hampton uh, really had a rough one in week one, giving up 72 points. However, uh, taking on a Mahar team, and uh, Jim Woodward back on the sidelines as I head coach. I heard that, yeah. And, uh, good to see him back. Fantastic. You know, I, I, as the years went by, he stepped aside however many years ago, and as, as the time was going by, I thought, okay, I guess he really is done. He's, he's back. He's Mahar football. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. no doubt about it. He, and, uh, he was always around. You know, he, he wasn't always too, he wasn't too far away, and... Oh uh, yeah, I mean he's just—I'm sure he's, he's one of those guys that just—he uh, had to have missed it, man. He did it for so long, yeah, and uh, yeah. he did it so well, and uh, I was so happy to hear that, uh, that he was coming back and, and coaching again this year. That's that's fantastic, and uh, again uh, they will be uh, more successful with him as a head coach for sure. Just uh, he does a great job. Yeah, and he's got some uh, got some you know some talented kids over there. They're not a bad football team, and uh, we'll see how they fare tonight against East Hampton, which again had a really tough time in Week One. Yeah, ouch. We have to talk about another team that. Also, has some good football players, just they don't have enough of them. They don't have enough players, period. We're talking about the Mohawk Warriors. Roster of 15, the preseason roster of only 15 players. They dressed 13 against Franklin Tech. They incurred three injuries in that game. They finished the game. The legality of this is in question, but right. they finished the game. Really, it was the very, very end of the game. 10 on 10. The only, they finished the season with 10 players. And I talked to a lot of athletic directors, coaches around the area, talking about the fate this year of Mohawk football, and they all say the same thing. If they can complete the season, it will be a miracle. It will be a miracle. Uh, again, yeah, you, you start with 13 kids, and, yeah, we were kind of unsure. We had a referee up in the booth with us that told us that you cannot compete with 10 kids on the field. You, you have to have 11 kids. Uh, as you said, in basketball, you've seen where kids foul out. You end up playing with four kids. You can do that. Uh, we were told you could not. Uh, two minutes ago in the game, of course, it was a 44 nothing game at that point. But yeah. um, And what I didn't realize until after the, the fact was we're counting the Mohawk kids trying to figure out if they got enough kids to put on the field. Uh, Joe Gamash for uh, Franklin Tech also put 10 kids on the field. Uh, so that was pretty classy, classy move by him. Uh, so they played 10 on 10 the last two minutes. And, uh, of course, yeah, yeah, the, the, the run, uh, the touchdown run, the 72-yard run there uh, at the very end of the game for Mohawk shot a little life into him. But. Uh, yeah, Jeff, I don't know. You know, um, I don't know how many kids they suited up tonight, but uh, they yeah, couldn't no have had more idea, than yeah. 13, 14, or 15, right? And, yeah. um, and they're playing Pathfinder, you know. and so they should get the W they could, uh, yeah. tonight. I would think I think they're going to win at home, and hopefully they can keep this together. But, I mean, they're, they're kind of doing it in more or less a MacGyver <laughs> type thing, just doing whatever they can, rig something up where they have enough kids to field the football team, and it's too bad. If it doesn't work out for them this year, that'll be uh, – a really yeah. sad, sad thing. Well, again, we saw it with Pioneer, and, uh, you know, they'd revived their program and done a nice job there. And uh, now, uh, you know, that, that program was shut down. Uh, the kids went down to Turner's to co-op there. Um, uh, it would be uh, sad to see the same thing happen to Mohawk. But, again, if you just can't find the kids to play and uh, you're just not going to have enough of them, it's not going to work. I mean, you can't suit up 11 kids and get on a bus to go play ball because kid gets hurt and yeah. you're done. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping uh, Coach McLeod and, and the rest of the community and the supporters and uh, the kids that want to play can uh, hold that thing together for this year. And um, uh, yeah, that would be sad. That would be very sad to see Mohawk not have a football program. It would just be uh, this would be right. Greenfield will have the football to begin the second half, which is going to begin in just a few minutes. Here, you've been listening to the Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report. Frontier 13, Greenfield 6. Second half kickoff next on Bear Country 95.3. Here come the Red Hawks. Chesky, a uh, little slower than usual. He just had uh, knee surgery, just got off crutches, uh, I think, last week. Cut you had a crutch? 
Cutchy on crutches. Well, I didn't like <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like what Cutchy was talking about about feeling every bit of his age because <laughs> we're the same age. We're is old classmates at Greenfield oh, High School. Oh, we're great. the same age. I'm yeah. not going to mention what that age is, 52. And I just feel yeah. like I really didn't want him to mention that at 52. We're, uh, I mean, I know we're playing the back nine of life. <laughs> Here's the hurt. kick. That's a free ball jumped on nicely by Jake Sackman. I tell you, that was a free ball. And Frontier was bearing down on him. That actually was a very effective yeah, kickoff because it was kind of just Jake bouncing Sackman. around. Yeah, the, the big hop and then another big hop. And you're right. That was very dangerous. Nice job there. Sack just dropping on the football. It's going to be right about the 25. Let's see where they mark that thing. Outside the 25, maybe about the 26-yard line. Yeah, that's where they'll start this drive. So good kick, but nice play by Sack. Love that kid. Yep, you have a history with him. Yeah, I got to coach him in baseball. Coach Hubie? Yeah, uh, great guy. Did yeah. the players call you Sean, Coach Hubie, or, uh, or, or Sir? Or no, <laughs> I don't think they called me anything. Mr. Hubie. <laughs> I never really coached. You know, I always thought about what I'd want to be called as coach. The coach is good. My coach. High formation. R.J. Bird up the gut. Bird. Breaking tackles. Nice first down gain for him. First play of the second half will go for about eight. Second and short. Yeah, a bit of a slow start in the first yeah, half for R.J. Ended stopped. up with eight carries nine, and 51 and yards. You made on that carry there, it, so. Isn't it funny how high he set the bar? He, he actually, at halftime, he was trending for 100 yards. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah a little yeah, slow, a little yeah, quiet. Yeah, a little Didn't quiet. find the end zone, only 51 yards. Well, he had 202 <laughs> last week, so yeah, he tends to set the bar pretty high. Yeah. Four touchdowns to go with that as well. 1,600 yards last year. Yeah. 2K will be tough. I will say that. Oh, That'll absolutely. be tough. We've only seen it once. Because ideally, Mike Kachuski would like to have more yardage from other guys. RJ on second down, first down. Uses a stiff arm, but then still on his feet, guys. Ripped down at the 39 yard line of Greenfield. It'll be a first down in 10. So two quick carries, and they'll move the six. Ryan Wilder. Ryan, Ryan 2K. Ryan 2K, over just 2,000 yards. When I started calling him that, he loved it. Yeah, of course he did. Of course he did. He's like, Ryan 2K. Hey, I'll never forget. I went in and <laughs> wish him luck for the season. Of course, he got dinged up his junior year. Probably should have had 1,000 yards that year, too, but uh, couldn't get there because of a bad ankle. I was just wishing him luck and uh, hoping that he, uh, you know, could get there that year. And he looked at me and said, I'm going to get 2,000 yards. I'm like, uh, calm All down, right. calm down just a little bit there. Uh, okay, Sparky, you know, but uh, <laughs> man, he went out and did it. It was awesome. And then he went and did it. Yep. That was amazing. And he did it on the radio. We were there that night. Oh, that was fun. High formation for Greenfield. They go right back to R.J. Burr, takes it over the right side. Yeah, yeah, Frontiers and Tudor D doing a fine job. They bring him down just after a short game. Ryan Wilder, though, he was the classic example of a young football player who didn't necessarily believe in himself right away, didn't realize how good he was, didn't, couldn't even force himself to say, no, it's time for me to dominate. And then he worked hard. Chris LaPointe and the other yep. coaches, and I won't slight those other guys, and Ryan himself. Yep. And, yeah, he, he, he figured it out. He put in the work, man. Yeah. That's what he did. You know, he wanted it. And, uh, yeah, he was never the biggest kid. I remember as a oh, freshman, God, you know, God, no. yeah, yeah, teeny five, teeny. five, maybe, five, six, maybe buck 20, buck 30. But um, it never really got big. He lifted. He was strong. Um, still ended up about five, seven, but fast. Second down and eight. Back to pass as Phelps throws on the right side. Well, incomplete. incomplete looking to hook up with Sack. Jake Sack at the 45-yard line. Third down. Third now down. here Burr. is where Greenfield's no at problem. Way. Third down and long. Frontiers come hard on blitzes. Say, yeah. Greenfield hasn't picked it up. Greenfield has not been uh, very consistent on offense. Today. Yeah, two sacks, and both sacks came on third and long plays. Killing both, both of those drives. Sack had one catch last week for nine yards. It was Campbell. With three catches for 45, he led the team in receptions last week. And Hunter will come to the far side right. And Vega to the near side left. Backs are in the I formation on third down and eight. See if Greenfield can keep this drive alive. Long snap count. Counterplay goes to R.J. Bird, right at the middle, and he breaks into the Frontier secondary, just got tripped up from behind, down at the 15-yard line. Closer to the 20, actually. It'll be first down and 10 for the way from there, so they don't pass on third down, and it worked. He just, you know, he just spun and then turned and right up the gut. 
Hildreth tracked him down. I thought Bird was going to be gone. He had the initial step on everybody, but nice job by Hildreth. Able to catch up, grab him from the backside, right around the belt, and ends up dragging him down about the 10 yard line. So that's a 46 yard rip right there. There we go. Now he's got some numbers, right? Yeah, RJ's thinking, okay, radio guys, mm -hmm. uh, off to a slow yeah, start right, today. Right. Yeah, How about 109 yeah, yeah. yards now, mister? <laughs> <laughs> and 313 for the season yep. and counting. The only thing that's gonna stop him from getting his third straight consecutive 1,000 yard rushing uh, season would be an injury. Out of the eye formation, don't even say that. Well no. RJ Bird on the right side, a little spare. There's the spin. this spin. Yeah, he got stood up by DeForest. Great play there defensively by Garrett DeForest. Kept it to a relatively short gain of about four. Second down and six. Yeah, he has been a lot of fun to watch. And you can see him mature every season. He gets better. Just a threat out of the backfield. That last handoff, he took about eight yards deep and took a second to look everything over and just shot straight up the middle of the football field. Again, looked like he was gonna be gone. It had not been for Hildreth able to track him down. So Greenfield now is gonna have a second down and they can get a first down, but pretty much right at the goal line. All just outside or just outside the five yard line right now. Second and five. Back side of the eye formation. Play action, big oh, left oh, oh, oh. picked up by Frontier, and the defensive lineman didn't realize he had the ball. First turnover of the night goes to the Red Hawks as Phelps got popped. Nathan Austin, well, what happened, you can see, yeah, Phelps got popped, the ball popped out, and he picked it up, and he started to run, he went, oh, no, wait, he thought that might have been an incomplete pass of the way the ball flew out of there, yeah, yeah. and everybody else is still just kind of standing there, he's like, oh, I'm going to run now, and he got a couple more yards, but... Yeah, no, again, uh, that would have been a huge sack for Frontier. Instead, they get the turnover as well. 27 yard line. And the ball thrown 27 yard line. So 13 6 lead, 6.51 to go in the third quarter. Got the ball back after another sack. And now a fumble as well. So Greenfield was looking to get the equalizer or a touchdown that would get them within one. They always go for two. So they're looking to take the lead on that drive. Not going to happen, at least not yet. On first down, McMillan breaks free on the right yeah, side. McMillan. Still spinning into the Greenfield the secondary, five. has the first Michael down. Campbell. Out across the 40-yard line, they'll be spotted down at the 42, first right. down and 10. Yeah, I think it was over 100 yards now, 107 yards, nine carries for him. Thank you for the support. RJ the number Bird, 113 yards, 0, 6, McMillan, 1, 107 for 1, Frontier. 2, 1, 4. Frontier is running the ball the very well against this Greenfield defense right now. And and they've been more consistent. Greenfield's here looked good spot. in stretches, but they've had some yeah. huge negative plays and now the turnover. Yeah, Frontier just, hasn't really had negative plays. Just the sacks, really, yeah. I mean, other, other than that, there haven't been too many bad decisions or bad plays, but yeah, the three big sacks and the fumble right there was huge. 6.15 to play third quarter. Frontier 13, Greenfield 6. Red Hawks on the move, first and 10 from their own 42-yard line. Hand up goes right up the middle. That usually means that it's Blight. We'll see if it's number six coming up off the bottom of the pile. It is. Corbin Blight on a carry. And he now will actually come off. Jake Sack on a stop. Made a four, second and six. Give him four yards there. Second down and six. Six. On a red ticket is zero, six, one, so one, Blight two, led the one, team four. last week in rushing yards. Zero, six, he had just nine one, carries, one, two, 65 one, yards. It was DeForest with 64, McMillan with 53 on the ground. Tonight, just five carries, 15 yards for Blake. Didn't find the end zone in the first half, though. Second down and six from the 46. Pitch goes to DeForest into the heart of the there Greenfield the defense. Yeah. And kept the pile moving close to the first down. He's not going to get it, but it'll be third down and short. A nice late burst there. Good effort there. Yeah, 66 yards now for DeForest. 10 carries. Got 107 yards on Cameron nine Black. carries. And kind of a quiet night for Matt Hildreth. Just uh, three pass attempts, complete, has completed Jerry two of those. For a hawk first down, first and 10, ten yards, and just one rush for the quarterback. Just one yard as well. 43 yard line. Third down and one line. from the, they're now in Greenfield territory by, oh wait a minute. They gave him the first. He did get the first, yep. Wow, I thought they had him uh, a good yard back. But again, the way he squirts through the middle like <laughs> that, and then all of a sudden the, the whole pile of bodies is just still moving forward. And, yeah, they marked him up. First down uh, and 10 for Frontier. And the ball right around the Greenfield 47-yard line. Frontier moving left to right, leading right now by seven. 
This direction play, it goes to DeForest, and he breaks free DeForest on the on left the side, close to another first down inside the Greenfield 40. Down, by Nate down at the 39, Nate Hazleton. Among those on the stop, second down and short. So they're racking up some big yards yeah, here. And DeForest is limping now. I'm looking at Garrett in the huddle. And a very pronounced uh, limp. Yeah, they did, yeah. They, did, the game, they did get Blight back into the game as well. But yeah, right. a little bit dinged up. up. Yeah. Look at him. They're not walking good. Second down and one. They will go center of the line and pushed back Corbin before Blight he could get the first down. Corbin Blight. He may have moved the pile forward just a smidge. We'll see where they mark him down. Basically, no gain. It now will be one. third down and one. A bunch of tackles yeah, tonight for Jake Sack. We've been hearing ticket. his name all night long. Just a sophomore. 061-1214. 061-1214. Freshman year last year at Greenfield. Versus father. Played for Big Blue. Turner's Falls, mid-80s. Was the MVP of the Turkey Day win at Greenfield, 1984. Who was the quarterback for Greenfield, remember? <laughs> 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 I do. Uh, poor, poor Tom Bresciano is never going to lift that down. His son Nick now plays flag down as he's going to be a quarterback play. keeper. It would have been good for a first down. <laughs> yeah, you're well, talking about the quarterback who's coming penalty. up through you know, the system. And yeah. you're saying, oh, good, maybe you've got a kid that can beat, beat Turner's on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> not a smile. Not, no, not even uh, yeah. not, not humorous even now. Even, <laughs> 38 yeah. years later, however long ago. <laughs> All the 30, uh, 34 years later, yeah. it's still a sore spot. He still's not happy about it. Well, no, listen, I grew up in Greenfield. From a Greenfield perspective, well, yeah. if, you, if you're a Greenfield player and you lose, well, back in that era anyway, oh, yeah. you lose on Turkey Day, you never forget it. If you're from Turner's and you win, yeah. you never forget uh, it. Both ways, yeah, yeah. They had some beefs too. They had Luke D'Onofrio and they had some uh, big, strong kids. Yeah, Tim, Tommy was a big, big. Tim, Tim Peters. Timmy, yeah, quick, uh, quick on the outside. Yeah, they had some talent. Penalty on Frontier, third down now out of the backfield, looking for the first pass and cut him right straight on the right side. First down and more, inside the 10, down inside the five yard line, down to the one yard line. Caught him right there. 42 yards, that's a huge connection there. Frontier, first down. Frontier now is perhaps one play away from making it a two touchdown game. 228 to play in the third. They lead 13-6, but they are right outside the goal line. Well, the one. well thrown ball by Hildreth. I just lobbed it right over the defensive back, right to his receiver in stride. He's able to turn and almost got in the end zone. They're gonna mark him right about the one yard line. Timeout, looks like somebody's gonna Time take out. here on the field. Frontier. Frontier. Timeout called by Frontier. We'll take a quick 30 second break. I'd give it to DeForest. <laughs> I let him catch his breath here and then let him take it in. He earned it. Back after this on Bear Country 95.3. All right, first down and goal from the one for Frontier. And they are going to go to DeForest. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown. The four-yard touchdown run by Garrett DeForest, his second score of the night. And Frontier now has opened up a 19-6 lead. Yeah, starting to kind of stretch this thing out now a little bit. Frontier running the ball very effectively. DeForest now 12 carries, 77 yards. Pair of touchdowns for him and Edo McMillan, 107 yards here. Right now, it's a six and go for the two point conversion. We assume. I think they're going to kick. I thought I, saw, I thought I saw one of the coaches put up a number one, a single finger in the air. Real 14, right, to get that extra point. Yeah, they are going to kick. Hildreth will kick. And they're going to do a 14 point, point after. Snap back, place it down, and it is blocked. That is a free ball. And. Bird, that was Bird. Yeah, Bird on the board. Yep. 2.13 remaining here in the third quarter. That will keep it a 13-point game now. We'll take Red another time out. 2.13 to play here in the third quarter. Car crest up Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. It's now Frontier 19, Greenfield 6. Back here in South Deerfield, want to welcome another new sponsor to the Bear Country High School football family, Decky Pizza, over there in Millers. Nice brick oven pizza. They'll deliver as well. We're going to hear their commercial here momentarily. Kondeki Pizza with us. 
I was uh, talking to Topher, by the way, the other day, Sean. Hey, the phone. how's Topher? He's doing well, but here comes the kick to Greenfield. Short kick, and it's brought back to the 43. First down and 10. I wasn't feeling too good after that. I was talking with Topher for a while. We were talking about the old days. 44 yard line. I guess it was the 90s. Yeah, it was the 90s that he played. Sure. He had some great seasons, and I said, finally, I said, oh, Topher, I know you got to go. I have to go too, but um, I have to ask you, how, how old are you now? Yeah. I wish I'm afraid to ask. Uh, 38. Yep. And I went, oh, no. I remember when they pasted <laughs> Ware. I think they put a 60-burger on Ware his senior year. And, yeah, they uh, did. Boy, that kid could run the ball. Yeah. Well, it's just amazing how quickly the time has gone by. It was 20 years ago, yeah? Late 90s, he was running up and down that field. I formation on first down. They will go to R.J. Bird up the middle. Bird. And he brings it across the midfield stripe down to the frontier 49-yard line. And he could gain a six. Corbin Boyd on a stop. Second down and Gaines. four. So that was the old Fran Tognari era. Six yards, second uh, and four. Yep. Turner's football. Togger. A lot of fun to watch the way he coached. Yep. Ryan was the quarterback back in those days. All right, ball at the 49 of Frontier. Clock in motion, 135 to play here. Third quarter, Frontier 19, Greenfield 6. Unless we knew Turner's Falls led at halftime at Athol, 14 to 6. Yeah, we'll try to get an update there, see how uh, Big Blue does. Out of the eye formation, quick drop, heavy rush. Phelps will take off himself. He has the first down. Well, uh, the scramble. Not a bad call there. Everyone was down you know, covered downfield. Ended up being basically a quarterback yeah, draw. A he's a big enough kick and has enough speed to pull that off. That was a great play by him. Yeah, as you said, he dropped back and no one to throw the ball to with the middle of the field. Just kind of opened up for him and put his head down, ran straight down the field, about eight yards on that carry for Phelps. So yeah, heady play there. First down, Greenfield. Just about a minute left here to go in the third quarter. And they're going to drive going now inside the Frontier. Oh, outside the 40, about the 44-yard line, 43-44-yard line, we call that. Frontier leads by 13 right now. So it's a two-score game. Doable for the way, but uh, they have dug themselves a hole here. Frontier's running the ball well. Out of the eye. It is R.J. Bird up the middle. Bird. Cuts to the outside. But Frontier waiting for him. But still a nice game on first down. We've got him about... About three or four yards there, second down coming up. Well, that's really what he's gotten better. I remember RJ as a sophomore. There were those plays where he'd get to just back to the line Andrew of scrimmage. Morgan there were a lot of plays where you have negative plays, and you haven't seen those tonight. He gets to the line of scrimmage. He's getting through that hole, and doesn't seem like he's going to get much. He ends up with three or four yards anyway. That probably was the last play of the third quarter. Yeah, Greenfield is not going to run a play here. End of three here in South Deerfield down the car crest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Children's Scoreboard. It is Frontier 19, from Frontier Greenfield 6. School. Fourth with quarter action next down. Bear Country 95.3. Greenfield Greenway 6. <laughs> Take a moment, give a shout out to the Red Hawk cheerleaders. Nice job, ladies. Fourth quarter set to begin. Greenfield with the ball, second down and seven. Ball spotted at the 39-yard line of Frontier. Green Wave trails by 13 points, 19 to six. Hazelton comes in motion. The give is the R.J. Bird on the left Bird. side. Breaks a few tackles. Close, stop. but short of the first down. It'll be third down and short. This is going to be a big third down conversion opportunity for the Wave. We're going to call it third and a long one or a short two. Yeah, and really four down territory here for Greenfield. We're for in the sure. fourth quarter now, and yep. yeah, down by two scores. So uh, third and short. Third and a yard. get it done on this play, you're going to assume they're going to run a fourth down play as well. Ball is marked on the far side hash mark. That's the left side hash mark as Greenfield views it, so there's more room to maneuver on the right side. What was that? That's my phone. Did you hit me that? That's my phone. Ooh. I formation, wide outs either side. Owen Phelps under center. They give right side. Oh, RJ Bird, Bird nothing carry. doing the hit immediately. It was Blight, the first man to meet him. Brings him for a loss. 
back outside the 35. It's fourth down and four. Great job the there by Blight. Yeah, they're going to knock him back a couple Four's yards. Four. So the scenario we just talked about, third and short, couldn't get it done. Now it's fourth and half. That's well, a good solid three yards right there. He's new Greenfield lineman. And they're working hard in practice and trial by fire going up against a very uh, aggressive and strong frontier D-line. And Greenfield's line, they'll get better as the season goes, but they're also going to have moments when they struggle with all those new kids out there. All right, fourth down and four for Greenfield. Phelps under center, back to pass, throws left side, yeah, undershoots the receiver. Looking for sack right on the on left flat, they turn down. it over on downs. And now Frontier with 9.21 left to play, leading by 13, and they get the ball. Yeah, Sack did a nice job. He ran down the defender, turned back towards the ball, and the ball was just underthrown. There was no way Sack was going to get to that. So Would have been good for a first down. Oh, he got again, he got to the sticks. He got to where he needed to get to. He ran the, uh, the perfect route. Again, turn, came back to the ball, and then the ball had been delivered. It would have been a first down, but a little bit underthrown, so... Some of the Greenfield guys, the defenders, are some of the same guys that are out there on offense. They're, see, I see some of them, the body language isn't good. They're hanging their heads, but they need to try to get Frontier on a three and out here. And it'll still be a game. On first down, it is DeForce. Is that a big night? Here, not across the 40 yard line. Again, they're not breaking the 20, 30, 40, 50 plus yard runs that the Worsley's Worsley, yeah. and Landry's did, but I'm, I'm telling you, yeah. they're doing just fine. They're doing just fine. Uh, DeForest is almost at 90 yards yeah. again. McMillan's because over 100. And over 100, yeah. So, you know, that, not quite the gaudy Second numbers those guys put up. But Remember, you I mean, you read the scoring recap, Aaron Landry from 72 yards out, and then it was Aaron Landry from 48 and 65, and I mean, those kids just could rip them. Stephen Worsley oh. from 52 and oh. whatever it was, yeah. All of it. Uh, these guys, yeah, not the big... Not the big touchdown runs, but effective running, very effective running by Frontier tonight. Second down and short. It's DeForest again, another fine run. He's gonna force down into first Greenfield down territory. The Red Hawks. And Frontier looking very much like they are going to get the W. We still have eight and a half to play. They'll stop the clock and set the chain, but as long as they continue what they're doing right now, they will get that win. Oh, many times we saw Landry and Worthley both run for over 100 yards last season. Right now, as we said, McMillan's at 107 to Forrest, 96 yards right now. So looks like they're going to come out of this game with a pair of 100-yard rushers as well. Greenfield defense motioning for the bench to make some noise. They're trying to get their spirit back, but their spirit's uh, not broken, but it's been uh, chipped away at a little bit here. And this play's going to whistle dead. Players jump in everywhere. It's going to go against the Easy call for the official there. It's going to go against the Hawks. Yeah, she man came in motion and all kinds of people jump in there. So not many penalties in this game. Actually, that's just the second penalty against the Hawks. Ten yards. Greenfield's had two penalties for 15 yards. So pretty well played game that, as far as that goes. Next Friday night, Greenfield at Turner's Falls. At Turner's Falls. We over at Bordeaux Fields for the first time this year. Always, I don't care what the circumstances are, always look forward to Greenfield Turners, yep. the green and the blue. Yep, absolutely. It's uh, still an electric environment, and even though they're going to play again on Thanksgiving, it's, uh, it's still pretty exciting. And again, it's a league game. It's a very important league game for both of those teams. And rolling out to the right now is Hildreth. He's in a bit of trouble, and he's going to get ripped oh, down by R.J. Bird. Again, as good as he is offensively, he's almost as good of a, as a defensive player. He just has great closing speed. Once he gets you in the crosshairs, he's not going to let you get away. Yeah, uh, there's some guys that yards. are just natural, you know, and he's just one of those guys. He's athletic, and he's quick, and he's smart. And Yeah, you get to a uh, loss of about four yards on that uh, one. Second down in 19. That was a big play. We well, needed that right there, and again, time is ticking away. Just seven minutes, 15 seconds to play. Clock is rolling, and... Frontier's going to take all kinds of time. They're not going to snap this ball in any hurry. Yeah, ideally, what Greenfield needed was uh, for somebody to kind of poke that ball out and get the ball back and uh, try to get back into the end zone. They've only been in there once. Here is the handoff. It's DeForest turning the corner. Big run left side, still going, and he's going to get the first down. Wow, what a run by DeForest. What a night for Garrett. Yeah, and now he is well over 100 yards as well. 106, uh, 114 now for Garrett DeForest. 15 carries for him. 
Edo McMillan, nine carries for 107 yards. That could have been the backbreaker yeah, right there. Greenfield had him second down yeah. and long, and now Frontier is in Greenfield territory. First and ten for the Red Hawks. Driving right down the field, killing time. Again, you know, they stopped the clock to set the chain, but now it's going again. 6.35 to play, 13-point lead for the Red Hawks, looking to make it a three-score game, yeah. which would, in fact, put it, it Yeah, yeah, this, this would be ball game for sure. Inside gift to Blight, big gainer up the middle into the Greenfield secondary inside the 25-yard line, down close to the 22. Daniel Vega on a stop. Another Red Hawk first down there, Very racking up the first yeah, down. Blight. Seven carries, 28 10. yards for him. Of course, he'd find the end zone in the first half. We talked about the force, yard he's line. over 100 yards. He owns over 100 yards. The force is on the end zone twice. McMillan not scored tonight, although he has 107 yards on nine carries. Let's see if we can get uh, number two into the end zone here. Yep. He's lined up on the uh, left side. He's coming in motion right now. Inside give, it goes Blight. to Corbin Blight the again, part of the Green Wave line. Yeah, the Green Wave defense, they're, they're, they're gassed. Nick Lyons way. on the stop for they have, uh, they have not won the battle in the trenches, and that means they're not going to win the football game. Yeah, again, that's, uh, that was exactly what Coach Kaczewski said. We know what they're going to throw at us, and now it's just about us stopping it. And they haven't been able to. No, not, not really, not at all. One time that drive... Uh, the first drive where Frontier got all the way down there and were kept out of the end zone. That's been about it. Second down and seven. Hildreth will pass, will throw towards the end zone, left side, under throw. Oh, that's, that's a pass. Has to be, yeah. Yeah, the Greenfield yeah. defender got there yeah. way yeah. early. And that ball was kind of just flung up there. That was an opportunity for a pick for Greenfield. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't capitalize. No, he kind of mugged him right there, and yeah, the ball was kind of he floating in. And the yeah, right, if he had taken the opportunity goal. to try to get to the ball, he might have made a pick instead. First he went at the receiver. The well, he, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. He's a young player. Ripped him down. And he played the receiver, not the ball. If he had played the ball, yep. he could have an opportunity, at least at a knockdown, maybe a pick. Yep. Instead, it's floating. It's going to be first down and goal. Three of 10, Phelps is passing now, 36 yards through the air. Uh, Hildreth. Uh, excuse me, Hildreth. 5-14 to play. Frontier looking to put this one into the W column. See what they go to here on first down and goal. Right around the five. Hildreth to McMillan. Right side. He He's is. going to waltz into the end zone Need for the touchdown. 25-6 Frontier as they have blown it open here in the second half. Yep, now all three backs have a touchdown. McMillan, 10 carries, 113 yards. He's on the end zone. Corbin Blight, as we said, found the end zone in the first half. The Forest, a pair of touchdown runs. Red Hawks look pretty good, I'll tell you right now. 25-6. Five minutes to play in this football game. Just dominant on offense. Defense has played pretty good. We have, to, we, have ball, some, but, uh. we have to pick a single player of the game. I, mean, I think the Frontier line is a unit, but we have to pick a player. Yep. And I kind of feel bad because, number one, we have uh, several worthy candidates. Yep, yep, for sure. And I think each of those young men would tell us for sure. They'd say, okay, I'll, I'll take a T-shirt, but it was the guys up front. And, yep. and they, they, they would be right. They have been able to pierce the Greenfield defense consistently with that uh, great push. Not a lot of negative plays for that offense tonight. Not a lot of huge plays, but as you said, effective. Just effective running. Eight, nine yards, five, six. Just piling them up now. 100, 200, approaching 300 yards. They got 52 through the air as well. So good offensive night, good defensive night. Greenfield's only scored the one touchdown. Attempted two point conversion. Frontier will go for two. And Hildreth will go back to pass. He's in big trouble, rolling to the right and breaks a couple of tackles, still going, but did not get in. We'll take a timeout. 507 left to play in the game. Here and on the car crest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Chilliwack Hall scoreboard. Frontier 25, Greenfield 6. All right, penalty on Frontier, so 15 yards, so they're kicking from the 25. If it was a closer game, I'd be really mad at the kid who did that. Yep. But it really doesn't matter at this point. Going after the kickoff. 
All right, personal foul penalty on Frontier, so they're kicking from the 25 yard line instead of the 40, so Greenfield will get good position here. But the weight now, trailing big. There's the kick, and that's going to go out of bounds. So they're going to throw the flag. Flag on a play. The ball went out of bounds at the 42 of Frontier. And see if Greenfield just takes it right there. Yeah, so the 15 yard penalty, as you had just said, off the air. In a 25 to 6 game, that's not as consequential, but a penalty you do not want to make in a close game. No. And now you're uh, putting yourself in a bad position. The ball gets kicked out of bounds and kind of ugly there for a couple of plays. But other than that, it's been a pretty darn good night for the Red Hawks. So Greenfield will take over first down and 10, and uh, the ball will be spotted at the 37-yard line of Frontier. But again, only 5.07 to play, 25 to 6, a 19-point lead now the last, for the uh, Hawks. Last check here at Athol, 10.53 to go in the fourth quarter. Turner's fall scores 28-20. Turner's leads at Athol. Ooh, good one over there, yeah. uh, Brian Field. First yeah. 10, Greenfield. High formation behind the quarterback Phelps, who's had Red Hawks in his face all night long. Rolling out to the left. Oh, he's got a man wide open. Throws underneath. That is Man's caught by five. Sack for the first down. Big wide step. open, though. Down step. near the end zone was Hunter Not Campbell. But it will be a first and ten for the wave. They'll stop the clock to, to set the chain. So, yeah, Greenfield would love to get now. in here at least once, maybe twice, make it a little... A little more respectable. It'll take a miracle for them to pull this out, obviously. Now, first catch for Sacker tonight. Yeah, had one last week, as you mentioned. Yeah, had nine yards last week. I was about 13 right there on that one. Phelps, four of 11 now passing. Now, is, there's going to be some good receivers we're going to see next week between Craver and Whiting of Turner's, mm. Sack, Campbell, mm. and Vega for Greenfield. We, we, we might see an aerial show, be fun. actually. First. That's been contradicted before. Yeah. I could be completely wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Throwing over the middle. Tipped incomplete. Oh, nice timed hit there by Hildred as he five. wrapped up the and intended Hildred. receiver down there. That's Campbell. Oh, no, that's 38. That is, see, the eight and the zero, I get them mixed up. Yeah, there. those were kind of close to each other. But, yeah, he uh, yeah, he a great play. Got there as the ball arrived and yep. was able to actually knock the ball away. You can see the receiver try to reach back to try to get it, but he was being held and brought to the ground, so... Good defensive play there. Well, this game a year ago was an instant classic of okay, that's field. This night, this it was week two. I'm pretty sure it was week two. I think two. it was. Yeah, we were at uh, we were Ath Turner, we were at right? Athol Turner's, yep. and uh, Turner's falls. Uh, Second and ten for the wave. Mopped the floor with the Red Raiders that night. Red Raiders were did not have a full complement of players that night. No, they had a bunch of guys out for the first couple of weeks, and they started 0 and 4. And they're going to go to R.J. Bird on a draw play, run out of bounds on the left side, right up near the first down marker. And they'll stop the clock. And did he get a timeout called by Greenfield? We'll take the break. 4-12 to play. Frontier 25, Greenfield 6. Back after this. It'll be third down. And one for Greenfield, the ball at the 14 yard line. They trail 25 sets, so they're just trying to make it a more respectable final here. And they've kept RJ Bird of the end zone. The lone Greenfield touchdown was on a pass from Phelps to Vega back at the uh, very end of the first quarter. All right, they come up now. 31. Phelps looks over the D, settles in. Lone back is RJ Bird. He's back to pass, throws over the middle. It is caught, and that's going to go 4-6. Touchdown, it's Vega. Touchdown, Greenfield, Owen Phelps. Vega, Vega excellent receiver. Touchdown. That combination should be there most of the season, well, Sean, if they completion. get some blocking. Caught him right in the seam, absolutely. Well-thrown ball by Phelps, his fifth completed pass. Out of 13 attempts, his second touchdown pass of the night. He's taken three sacks, fumbled the ball once as well, so... Been yeah. a busy night for Owen. That was actually the lone turnover tonight, Sean. Week two of a season with a lot of young kids playing. We've had one turnover, and that turnover really was, you know, you'd hardly fault Phelps. He got popped big time. Yeah, not a lot of penalties either, you know, yeah. just a few of those. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Both not, teams have done a really good job tonight. Yeah. Greenfield has not played a bad game, but Frontiers just played a little bit better. Greenfield will go for two. It's 25-12 to 12 right now, and we'll have this 
two point conversion and then an onside kick is definitely coming. No doubt. We feel they're, they're going to go down fighting for sure. They're not going to win this football game, but they're going to they're going to come hard the whole game. Oh, again, it, it, it not played a bad game, and the score. I guess it is indicative. I, I guess they have to because yeah, yeah, I mean the way Frontier ran the ball tonight. But yeah, the score is pretty know. much yeah re re reflects the game. I would yeah. say yeah at this point. All right, two receivers to each side. Phelps under center. See if they go to the air again. There's some Vega in motion to the left. Short drop, looks left, throws left. And did he catch it on the like deflection? He did. Nice catch down there by uh, Vega. Yeah, that was Vega, yep. So well, Vega makes Daniel the two-point conversion. It's 25 20. to 14. We'll take a timeout. 405 to play. 25-14 in favor of Frontier. All right, Jeff and Hubie back here in the booth. And every single soul here knows what's about to happen. Yep, the yeah, Greenfield got to get this ball back. They got to get it back in a hurry. 405 to play. Again, just scoring now, making it 25-14. So you can't give Frontier the ball back right now. You've got to get it on an onside kick. And that's exactly what we're going to see. Now, what will they do? There's all kinds of ways to do this. They were excellent at this last year. Yeah, right. You mentioned the Mahar game. Oh. They just stole that game with onside kicks. <laughs> Senators never had the ball. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, but four or five, they did five times. They were successful four. Yeah. All right, so let's see what they do. Hunter Campbell to kick it. And here comes the onside kick. A little bit of a pooch. Free ball, but Frontier got it. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was free just for about a half second. Yep. And yep. the Greenfield player was unable to wrestle it away. It was a well-executed kick. I mean, he, he kicked it right where he wanted it to be, and then there were a couple of Red Hawks there. And, uh, yeah, you could see the ball free just for a second. Uh, they were able to jump on it. So, yeah, so Frontier will get this ball after the onside kick. So now Frontier's just going to run this football. Greenfield does have four timeouts. So four minutes to go, four timeouts. They, I mean, obviously have to keep Frontier out of the end zone. they got to get this ball back. Ooh. We have an injury with a cheerleader who just oh. turned a oh. went to turn a uh, handstand. Oh. Well, she's okay. Oh. And Hildreth will keep it on the quarterback keeper. No, it is McMillan right side into the Greenfield secondary. Oh, Great ball fake down. by Hildreth. I thought he had it. But it was McMillan with a quick burst on the right side and a first down to the Greenfield 35 yard line. Yeah, he's up. About 130 yards now is Edo McMillan. For all of this year and all of next year, is he number two? I want to ask him why he is number two, because again, that's just a jersey number. You, you, you never see it, really. No, nope, no. Nope. Number two, really? Actually, yeah. all three of these fellows are juniors. DeForest, Blight, and McMillan. Yep. So you got this entire core back for next year. All of this year and all of next. On the post-game show, we'll see if we can get a final from Athol. And I'll tell you what, we'll wait after this first down play from the Greenfield 35. And it is going to be a quarterback keeper. And Hildreth will get dropped for a loss. Oh, the ball is ball. free. Wow. And Greenfield got the wow. ball back. That's just the last thing that you could have happened. Oh. I mean, Hildreth was just kind of running around back there. And, and got stripped. Yep, it got pulled out. and. So Greenfield, a breath of life anyway, down by 11, 312 to play here. 45 yard line, but they, Sean, I mean, okay, so if there's 312 left, they're down by 11, so it's still a two score game. They would need to score. Here in the fourth quarter. Well, we've seen quick, it before. Real quick. We've well, seen it before, but you, you don't want much line. less than two minutes left in the game without having scored a touchdown here, if you're Greenfield. Yeah, well, a lot of things have to go right, obviously, but still down 11, three to go. They got the ball back. That was huge. Right, we'll see what they do. Double wideouts to either side. See how aggressive Hunter is with the rush. Quick pass tipped at the center of the line. That's DeForest who knocked it up into the air. Nice play there by Garrett. Had a fine night. He definitely is a strong candidate for the uh, player of the game. Oh, absolutely. Omega. Absolutely. Yeah, nice job there getting the big mid up. And they were running deep routes, so there was really nobody in that intermediate area where the ball got popped into, so it fell incomplete. A nice job getting the hand up and deflecting that pass. 
3.08 to play, Frontier by 11, 25 to 14. They have been the dominant team. First quarter was kind of a standoff. Frontier started to take control in the second, and then they really took control in the third and into the fourth. Yep, and again, just running the ball effectively. Playing good defense, yep. Great. Bird, uh, you know. Great uh, game plan drawn up, obviously. You say by Helbert, he, he has 140 yards, but <laughs> you know, they've held him out of the end zone anyway. They go to the I formation, loose ball on Long the ground. Line. Greenfield will keep it, but it's going to be third down at about 12 now as it was lost on the exchange from center. I think they're going to take a timeout here to stop the clock. The we'll take the break as well. 2.59 to play, 25-14 Frontier. Back after this on Bear Country 95.3. All right, we're back here now in Athol. The Red Raiders have scored, but they failed on their conversion try and with about eight minutes to play over there. It's Turner Falls 28, Athol 26. And I'll tell you, the other team I really hope wins because there's no guarantee about how many games they're going to get to play this year, but Mohawk is playing Pathfinder. And hopefully they'll get the W. I know they had a tough time against uh, Franklin County Tech, a superior team, and they finished the game with 10 kids on the field, honestly. Yeah, again, you know, we're all rooting for them up there. You know, again, I, hope they can, uh, I hope they can pull it off, yeah, Sean. Yeah, you know. Not, not beyond the game tonight. If they can complete the season, yep. that would be phenomenal. Uh, and then chucking a couple of wins there, too, you know, and then there are some games that they are going to be able to win, and tonight is one of them at home. And again, it's just about how many bodies they can suit up and keep healthy. Well, the word I've been hearing, too, is the football program, if they have to do a co-op, it would actually be with Greenfield. Really? That's what I'm hearing. I kind of wondered. Po possibly. I kind of wondered. But, again, that, that talk is a ways off. Oh, yeah. 25-14. Third down and long. Phelps back to pass. Floats it. Incomplete. Would have gone for short yardage. Converted his fourth down. So one final opportunity here for the way to try to make it a little bit closer here. Yeah, fourth and 11. Phelps 5 of 15 passing now, about 60 yards through the air. You know what I wish that they had run? And may, may, maybe they were trying to do that right there a little bit, but what's what's one of my favorite? Third, third, and, third, no, third and long plays. Third and long. Drop. Uh, drop play or a screen. Yeah. I love Nobody screens. runs screens anymore. Who yeah. runs a screen? Do you ever see anybody run a screen? Yeah, I remember, uh, well, Tog over at Tories oh, yeah. used to run that all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fran Tog Neri. I'm pretty sure he learned that from uh, Coach O'Reilly. They use that to great effect Absolutely. back in the 90s over there. All right, here we go. Fourth down and 11 for Greenfield. Back at around their own 41. Ah, oh, Phelps dropped the ball. Fumble on the Actually, snap. it does not matter. Well, it got picked up by a Greenfield player who kind of flipped it over to R.J. Bird. But it wouldn't have mattered even if they hadn't Red gotten the ball over. back and it turns over on down. So Frontier will take over. 2.45 to play. They still lead by 11, and they will get their first win of the year. Greenfield will get their first loss. Yeah, it was a good job by Greenfield to hang in there. And again, they made it a little exciting here at the end. They got the touchdown. They did get a fumble and a, a turnover. So, but yeah, not tonight. 25-14. Frontier now with the ball in Greenfield territory at the 40. And again, they'll just run the ball, keep it on the ground. Greenfield, I believe, has three timeouts remaining, so they'll use those at some point. But yeah. We'll see if they wait. Well, this is when you appreciate. I've read uh, a player uh, like La last Santiago uh, for Greenfield last uh, several years. He graduated last spring. He was good. But it was interesting with him. And now oh, another now fumble, the out. and fumble Greenfield puts it right back. Another fumble. And the ball goes back to the 46 yard line. The wave gets it right back. That was Sack, and he just perfectly timed that. He came running up from the middle linebacker spot, got to the line of scrimmage as the ball was being snapped, and got to Hildreth as he was getting the ball and able to knock it out. So again, Greenfield not going to go quietly. 2.40 two two to play. 40 to go, yeah. Finishing my thought about uh, Laz Santiago, though, he knew nothing about football when he came to the school, when he came to the town. And mm -hmm. Learned, put in a lot of work, and became a leader he was good. on that team. He a was team good. that uh, won seven games last year. Run stopper. And by the end of his career, he was just throwing kids around. Uh, up and down the line, man. Yeah, no, no, he was great. Really <laughs> was fun to watch. That's what him. Greenfield needs to do. They need to try to develop that next uh, great lineman or two, and, th and they'll be just fine because the skill position guys are all right there. Mm -hmm. Phelps will take a short drop right over the middle and Phelps catches Hazleton to the Frontier 40 for a first down. They'll stop the clock at 235 to play. So they're in Red Hawk territory at the 40. 
Good for 15. And a timeout called by Greenfield here. So we'll take a quick break here. 2.35 to play. Frontier 25. Greenfield 14 on the car quest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. An onside kick. Yeah. A little funner. We'll take it here. I said funner. Funner. All right. Owen Phelps. Almost called him Kyle. Owen, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Owen Phelps yeah. rejoins the Greenfield huddle now. First down and 10 for the wave at the 40. He's just doing that short drop. And the Greenfield uh, receiver is doing a good job of getting open. Just those quick, uh, quick little slant ins. Uh, he's done a couple on, yeah, those, uh, yeah, right down the seam, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to try to do the same thing here. First and 10, Greenfield. First down and 10. Phelps, they go up the middle to R.J. Bird, cuts to the outside. He's got the first down and more. Left sideline, inside the Frontier 20. They'll stop the clock well, with 2.26 to play. Very good and Greenfield, Greenfield is knocking down. on the door. I, about 10 minutes ago, I said that it was over. And I only said that because I really felt like it was. It did feel that way. And, and it yeah. probably still is, but Greenfield's going to go no huddle now. The ball is inside the 20. Called the 17. First down and 10. They like clock that. it. 2.17 to play, it'll be second down now. Now with the Phelps clock, the ball clock stop, stop the they can take a shot. Well, here's the thing. They would like to take a shot at the end zone. The problem is, is that when they've taken a deep drop and had to wait for receivers to get open, Phelps has had to endure the sack. So he's just taking a two-step drop and finding the first available guy. Yeah, That's usually only for five or seven yards. Right, right, right. Just short, short, short drop and short throws. And he's been sacked three times tonight. Again, had that fumble as well. Yeah, they're not going to go shotgun here. But that was actually a nice call. They mixed it up. They, you know, they hadn't had the ball to RJ for a while. Took it for a nice uh, gain. All right. Bird is the lone back. Two receivers to either side. Second down and 10 from the 17. Phelps looking to the right. Throws. That one is caught. And that is Hazleton now. Again, Hazleton. just outside the 10-yard line at the 11. And Josh Zemanski on a stop. It'll be timeout third down. Called by the Green Wave. Another timeout called by the Wave. We'll take a quick 30 second break. 210 to play. Frontier 25, Greenfield 14. Back after this. Alright, so we've got one. Two, three, three. Okay. Take it here, Dave. We'll take it here. We'll take it here. The ball now just outside the Frontier 10-yard line. Third down and four for Greenfield. They get a first down right around the six, six or seven. Phelps under center. Gonna roll to the left, looking towards the end zone. Let's it fly down there. Caught, sack, oh, touchdown. Yeah. Complete for a 25 touchdown. to 20. We're not done yet, Sean Hubert. But you said a long time ago this game was <laughs> over, remember? Remember you said that? Touchdown, uh, Greenfield, why, number five. Why didn't you call sack. me out on that? Uh, why, why, I, I why agreed. Did you, I, I agree, you know, I need you to say, well, you know, Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't feeling it. No, that wasn't feeling <laughs> it. 25 to 20 with 202 to play. Well, you said something about wanting two minutes to have the ball, right, for that last possession, and yep. that's what we ended up with, a couple of turnovers in the middle of the field, and now a nice drive by Greenfield. The only negative is that burning those timeouts because one now they don't, have, they don't have those to use defensively. I think they have one left. Well, you're going to yeah. have to get the inside, inside kick. Inside kick. But first, the two-point conversion. It's a five-point game right now, 25-20. They go back to the I formation. Phelps looks over the D. Gives it to R.J. Bird, and R.J. is into the end zone. Not a touchdown, but the two-point conversion. We'll take a quick break. 2.02 to play in the game. 
score. What a comeback by Greenfield. Frontier 25, Greenfield 22 on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. So here it is. The Greenfield Green Wave has scored twice here in the fourth quarter to take it from 25 to 6 to 25 to 22. 202 to play, they only have one timeout remaining by our count. They will go for the onside kick here. They'll kick from the 40, and we'll see if they can somehow, some way, come up with this football. If not, they absolutely will not be able to uh, give up even one first down. No, one timeout remaining, that's it. Uh, even if they got the ball back, they'd have almost no time left. So this is huge, obviously. All right, Hunter, Hunter Campbell, Campbell kick off. sent to boot it. The onside kick coming up. Greenfield trailing now by only three. Campbell runs up, tops it. It's loose. It's a little loose. Oh, it Greenfield, like Greenfield got the football. <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> work not done yet. Yeah. This is unbelievable, Now, Sean. did that go 10 yards? It did. It, 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 it popped back. All right, because they're behind the 10-yard line, crossed, but yeah. It crossed the 50, yeah. and it came right back. Right. As long as it goes 10 yards, Greenfield line. got it. And now look who's hanging their heads. Look at the Red Hawks walking off the field right now with wow. their heads hung. And Phelps has been hot these last couple of drives using that short drop, quick slant ins to players like Sack and to Hazleton. We'll see what they do here. Plenty of time. One, uh, plenty of time now with 157. What an amazing comeback. I feel so bad about this. <laughs> we'll have to review the tape. We'll have to have a little film session. No, Jeff. let's, how about we, we don't? Go back and uh, decide where we made our mistakes. How about we don't? Okay. Just like uh, the coaches say, <laughs> we're gonna burn that tape. We're, we're on a turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Greenfield is 40, uh, 52 yards away from the go-ahead score. Fun. First down and 10. Phelps, under center. Coming in motion is Hazleton. They give us to R.J. Bird on the left RJ side. Bird he gets popped carry. after a gain of about five. Brings it to the 46 the yard line of Frontier. Greenfield's gonna go no huddle. Not a bad call four. again. It's not like it's... Plenty of time. Yeah, 140 and clock in motion. What they need to do is to avoid the third down and long situations. That's been their Achilles heel tonight. Phelps back to pass, looking right, throws right. That is caught by Hazleton, has the first down. Down to the 35 yard line of Frontier. They'll stop the clock to send the chains, a minute 25 left. Completion good for a first and down. Phelps is now Samantha starting to pile up some numbers. Nine down, completed passes, 19 attempts. Yeah, his guys are getting open. They're having no trouble getting open at this point. First down and 10. He will clock it with 1.17 to play. That'll make it second down and 10. 1.17 to play. Frontier 25. Greenfield 22. Are we going to have a fantastic finish here? I'll tell you, Greenfield looks very calm right now for the situation that they're in. I mean, yeah, they Phelps took this time. They got yeah. to the line. He spiked it. Everything's fine. You know, just... Uh, Second and oh, ten. Confident. Yeah, you're right, Sean. It's very easy for the moment to get too big for you. You're on high school yep. You know what you're supposed to do. You know what your coach is telling you to do. Yep. But so sometimes it's hard to pull it off. Jump off sides. Or, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Second down and ten. Ball's on the 35-yard line of Frontier. Red Hawks just hanging on. They lead by three. But they have given up two touchdowns and now an onside kick. Here comes Frontier, big rush, throws right side to sack off his that hands. It would have been good for a first down. There was a lot of pepper on that one, though, and it was a bit high. Thrown hot and thrown high, yeah, just a little bit. Sack did a nice job. He got turned around a little bit, too. You can see as he tried to reach up for it, but, yeah, that thing came in hot and just a little bit high. Third down and 10. Yeah, Frontier brought the big rush. Minute 13 to play. Greenfield, no timeouts remaining. They trail by three. They trail 25-6 seemingly moments ago. <laughs> Wasn't that long ago, no. Two touchdowns, including the uh, two-point conversion the second time around. The Red Hawks back on their heels here a little bit, for sure. Third and 10 from the 35. Phelps takes the snap. Draw play, no, rolling to the left, looking to buy some time. 
He'll tuck it under, gets run out of bounds. Does a good job of getting out of bounds to stop the clock. But now it's fourth down. No, they did not get out of bounds. A minute left. Oh, they're gonna have to burn their last timeout. And okay, so I, evidently they did have that one yep. final timeout. We will take a 30 the second Wave break, 59 seconds left. Frontier 25, Greenfield 22, back after this. So this is it for Greenfield. Fourth down and about seven. The ball's on the 32, 33 yard line. 59 seconds to go in the game. Yep, they need to get the ball to the 25 yard line to keep this going. If they are able to get the first down, the clock will stop for them to reset the ball. Greenfield then would clock it, right. but number one is to actually make the first down here. Yep, and it's his fourth and uh, fourth and as you said, about seven yards, so not a gimme for sure, but the way Phelps has been connecting with his receivers. Fourth down for Greenfield. Exciting game seven. has ended up being. All right, here they come. Double wideouts to either side. The lone back is Bird on fourth down and seven. Phelps ducks in under center, calling the signals. Takes the snap, back to pass, throws over the middle, incomplete. Flag. There's a flag. It is against Greenfield. Green Whatever. Right. The Greenfield. Five yard yeah, it's going to be a five-yard penalty. So that's actually decline the penalty. Yeah, decline the penalty. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's ball game right there. Yeah, decline. Yeah, don't don't take that penalty. No, incomplete pass. Red Hawks decline the penalty, and uh, it'll be first and ten. Red Hawks. Greenfield with no timeouts remaining. Yep, yeah, and Frontier will hang on and get the victory. Oh, looks like, oh, we're gonna add, add three seconds to yeah, the clock. We're gonna add three seconds to the clock. Oh, wait a minute, Sean. Mm. They, they're saying it was on the snap, so they had to take the penalty. Oh, well then there you go. So, so now it's gonna be fourth and 12, so Greenfield does have one more shot here. Yep, it was a penalty before the snap. So that play ultimately was whistled That I didn't hear the whistle though. I saw the flag, I did not hear the whistle. Just 20 yards in penalties against Greenfield tonight, though. Right, so longer, though, for any receiver who catches the ball. They go to the I formation now. On fourth down. Phelps oh, loses oh, the oh, handle, oh, picks it up, and falls on it. Oh, and Frontier oh, will get the victory. A disappointing ending as he lost the ball off the snap, and Phelps could not corral it. Eventually just jumped on it. That happened and, a couple of times. Yep. And, a uh, bad spot for that to happen right there. Yeah, just uh, never got a handle to it. Yep, you had your one final shot at it. Uh, he was able to pounce on it, but that was irrelevant at that point. So the Red Hawks now will take two knees and get victory number one on the year. And Greenfield's thinking, wow, if we had played a better third quarter, we could have snuck out here. But of course, conversely, Frontier would say, hey, if we had taken care of business in the fourth, it shouldn't have come down to the last minute of the game. Yeah, no, Greenfield made it exciting for sure. There's the first knee. They'll have to do it one more time. But nice job by the Red Hawks to hang on there. I yeah. mean, Greenfield came storming back. They and, sure did. Uh, looked like they were gonna try to pull off the impossible. They got close. They had the ball, had some time. And just uh, Second and ten. fumble on that last play. Took away their final shot. Now, if you're Frontier, and do I even have to say this? On this snap, <laughs> from Throw center it. to Throw quarterback. <laughs> no, make sure you handle it. Yeah. Because yeah. you know the Greenfield interior linemen are going to try yeah. to get in there and yeah. get the ball. Nobody's getting near your quarterback right yeah. here. Just yeah. take it. That's it. Yeah. That was the last snap. And the Frontier Red Hawks are going to get the victory 25 to 22. For Sean Hubert and Dave Reno, I'm Jeff Terrell. Thanks for joining us tonight and have a great weekend in Bear Country, everyone. Uh, 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 uh.